Thursday, the 8th of November 2007, and after last week's disturbing news that if we don't want our insides to turn to charcoal and our heads to ooze mints, we must cut out everything that makes us fat and stay out of the sun. Comes the confusing news that if we want to stay young and beautiful, it's our duty to be beautiful, then we must get fat and get a tan. They really are saying this now. Last week the sun was known to age you. Today it's confirmed as a hot fountain of youth. Likewise, last week fat people would die before I got to the end of this sentence. Today it's said that they will live longer than skinnies. Would you people please make your minds up? Hey! Still okay to get drunk though, right? Or did I miss that memo? One list of instructions that came to light today was the Italian Mafia's Code of Conduct, which states, and I am not making this up, that they should stay out of pubs, respect all appointments, and not associate with those who do not hold moral values. The Mafia. They should also learn how to tie knots, promise to do their best, and follow the scout leader's instructions without question, or he'll kill you. And speaking of death, it was revealed today that shellfish have feelings. That's right, prawns are people too. Not emotional feelings, naturally, but the hurting kind. Sadists, I mean scientists, put an irritant on crustaceans' antennae, and the poor things try to rub them better for five minutes. Ah, so it's quite likely that lobsters feel a bit of an owie when they're plunged into boiling water. But we shouldn't feel sorry for them. Clearly, it's their own fault for being so yummy. Mm. I don't think I've had any lobster since my 40th birthday. I went out and uh, treated myself. It was a muck lobster. When was that? Uh, 19... Um... No. Hang on. How old am I? <laughs> Eight years ago. It was... 2000? 2000 yeah. is the right answer. Yes, thank you. Do you like lobster? Uh, it's like a big prawn. It's, um, fabulous. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I said to the waiter, because I was, um, uh, you know, money meant uh, nothing to me on the night of my 40th birthday, I said, do you recommend the lobster? What a stupid question. It's uh, but twice as expensive as anything else on the menu. Of course he does. He said, I always recommend the lobster, sir. So that's what I had. Oh, so fantastic. How many guests were there? Just, uh, just me. Oh, dear. I brought a bag to put on my head, uh, and I sat in the corner of the restaurant so as to wallow in my own misery. On my birthday, darling. So lobsters can feel pain. Yeah, apparently. I, I, uh, and when I order lunch, I always want it to be uh, brought to me in agony. I want the maximum amount of pain to be, um, to having uh, been uh, inflicted on my lunch. That so way it tastes... Far, a bit of foie gras. How do you say that? Foie gras. You like that? Foie gras. Well, I, only recently have I started eating meat. I, I didn't eat meat for about 20 years or so. Mm. Um, not because um, I have cared about the fluffy bunnies, but... Um, do you want to get those, Victoria? <laughs> <laughs> we have an entirely new team. Again, it's uh, like a theme. Every time I come in here, I've got no idea who's sitting there through there. It's never dull, though, is it? No, that's right. Um, Helen is feeling a little bit better. Glad to see it. A little it. bit, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Victoria, who I've never met before, is um, doing the what you don't. Even the boss is off. Really? Mm. Which one? The big boss? Yeah, Jonathan. Right. Is he feeling ill? I don't know. It's this building, I'm telling you. I was uh, having a discussion about Alex, uh, having a discussion with Alex about that. Um yesterday and every time i come in here uh i'm i'm just forever going eh, eh, eh. Uh, it, and i thought it was just me because i've been dragging a cold around with me for about f five weeks now and i thought that's just my general malaise but um he uh, assures me that it's everybody and it feels as though all of my um uh, bodily fluids are packed into the sinuses behind my doze i've got a cold of my doze anyway um the uh, lobster thing. Sensitive chefs avert your eyes now. This was in the uh, Guardian, but uh, most of the papers had this. An investigation into the most contentious of kitchen dilemmas has reached its unpalatable conclusion. Lobsters do feel pain. I don't understand why this would be uh, questioned. Of course, all animals feel pain. But that's the only way by which they can stop doing something that might kill them, right? I mean, that's uh, the most basic of um, uh, animal responses, surely. 
Because if you do something, if if an, any animal puts its hand into fire, then the pain part is the th is the alarm bells ringing that tells it to stop doing it. A little light goes off in their tiny little animal brain. Warning! Warning! It says, stop doing it. And um, so, of course, they feel pain. Uh, the question of crustaceans' ability to experience pain has become an unlikely obsession for some scientists. Over the past few decades, the question's been batted back and forth as fresh evidence comes to light. Two years ago, Norwegian researchers declared that the answer was a firm no, claiming the animal's nervous systems were not complex enough. And I bet that if it weren't so absolutely delicious, then nobody would have done any research at all. It's just that um, you feel guilty for cooking something. And foie gras is probably the same. I've never tasted it because, as I say, I've only just recently started eating meat from a 20-year um, layoff. And I'm uh, e easing myself in slowly. I'm very upset that they're telling you you can't eat bacon now because that's the, the most delicious thing I've had so far. Chicken is OK, but it's just OK, really, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't really taste of anything. It's a bit chewy unless you cook it just perfectly to the second when it can be quite moist. But but in my experience, that never happens when you cook it yourself. It's all, it always comes out the uh, texture of a beer mat. But bacon, on the other hand, you can cook that until it's properly dead, and it still tastes yummy. In fact, the, the more you cook it, the more delicious it becomes. Bacon's gorgeous. Yeah, isn't it? And so, and, and that's my favourite so far. And now, now they've, they sh this is though they showed it to me, and then they took it away. Um, the latest salvo published in New Scientist today comes from Robert Elwood, an expert in animal behaviour at Queen's U University in Belfast, uh, who obviously has nothing better to do, uh, with uh, help from... Because, uh, I mean, really, what's the point? I mean, you determine that shellfish um, uh, experience pain, and then what? Where's that going to lead you? It's, it's just scientific research for the sake of it. Onanism. I don't really get it. Well, maybe it's to make you feel guilty while you're eating it or something. Well, that can be the only reason, in order to uh, protect the feelings of crustaceans. Um... The way he did it was, uh, he set about finding an, uh, an answer by daubing acetic acid onto the antenna, antennae, antennae, anten uh, antennae, antennae, of 144 prawns. Immediately, the creatures began grooming and rubbing the affected antenna, while leaving untouched ones alone. So, all of the ones that he'd um, dipped in acid. <laughs> but why, why didn't he just do ten? Why, why 144? I, it seems an odd number. I've got no idea. Um... He said that uh, the response is consistent with an interpretation of pain experience. In other words, they, uh, they're feeling pain. The same pain sensitivity is likely to be shared by lobsters, crabs, and other crustaceans, the researchers believe. He said that sensing pain is crucial for even the most lowly of animals because it allows them to change their behaviour after damaging experiences and so increase their chances of survival. Is that not what I just said? How, how can one person be so right all the time? Staggering. Uh, the claim will add, rate, uh, will add weight to campaigns by animal rights organisations which protest against lobsters being balled alive. Really? I'd have thought they'd have been keen on, like, foxes and bunny rabbits and, like, you know, fluffy things that you might want as a pet or a stuffed toy. But not lobsters. There's nothing, there's nothing nice. You want to cuddle, cuddle, cuddle a lobster, you'd never smell anything else again. Conscientious uh, eaters need not necessarily abandon lobster. Other scientists believe that the debate is far from over. Many think only vertebrates have advanced enough nervous systems to feel pain and suspect that the prawn's reaction to having acid daubed on their antennae was an attempt to clean them. Shrimps do not have a recognisable brain, says Len Snedden, the Liverpool University researcher. Oh, they've got such a yummy tail, though. Mmm. You could argue that the shrimp, the shrimp is simply trying to clean itself rather than showing a pain response. Um, some other chap from uh, Salt Lake City stressed that most animals possess receptors which respond to irritants. Even a single cell organism can detect a threatening chemical gradient and retreat from it. But it's not necessarily sensing pain. So go ahead and tuck in anyway. It's 7.15. Here's Alan Joyce with LBC Travel. Thanks, Nick. We're just getting word in from Matt on the jam line that the M3 has two lanes closed heading away. 97.3. 0845 Nick Abbott. Here are the studio calls flashing up on the indicator. First in Crawley. Hello, Richard. Hi, Nick. Richard. Uh, you might remember yesterday we were talking about high-speed trains. Oh, yesterday when all my troubles seemed so far away. Oh, have you had a bad day? No. All right, fair enough. 
Uh, well, the, you uh, you might remember that we didn't quite finish our conversation, and you were sort of well, you, you must have obviously been waiting for part two. So I'll <laughs> I'll go for it now, I guess. <laughs> the next exciting instalment in whatever it is you're saying, yes. Okay. Well, you were sort of w worrying that the high-speed line costs so much money. Okay, here, uh, I can't remember the exact figure, so I'll just pull, f pull some from space. £5.6 billion pounds it cost to put the extra train uh, line, instead of going into Waterloo, for it to go to King's Cross. They have to go underground, right? Yeah, that's, that's 5. quite... £5.6 billion, pounds, 800, th 800 million pounds to um, uh, clean that shed that the trains will leave from. All to shave 20 minutes off going to Paris. I mean, it only takes uh, two hours 50 anyway. What difference does it make? Well, I mean, the time saving is not really the main thing. I mean, it's part of it. It's part of it. I mean, the main time saving was when they built the first half of the high speed line. Yeah. I and mean, you might remember, you might re recall when you went to uh, Paris a few weeks ago, you, you actually went fast through Kent, for, which, is un which didn't happen before. Right. Relatively fast. It right. really picked up speed when it got to France. No, it's actually the same speed in Kent as in France. Is now. that true? 186 miles an Why hour. Why does it go so slowly through the tunnel? Yeah, it's 60 miles an hour through the tunnel only. Why is that? I don't know. I think it's, it must be safety issues. Oh, health and safety, bound to. Yeah, there's, I mean, a, man, I mean, there's a man at the front running running in front of the train with a cone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you've got all the other, uh, uh, you know, all the other sort of car shuttle trains as well. Probably that's part of the reason for the, because you have to let them in every so often. <laughs> Let them in from a siding. Well, it's basically what because there's only two tracks through the uh, through the tunnel. Right. And you know you've got the you've got the main line, and then you've got all the. Um, and they do say that if the driver uh, arrived at work in a BMW, he'd never let the train in from a siding. <laughs> well, I mean, so yeah, fair enough. It only saved. I mean, the actual bit that they've just built now, which is the tunnel. I mean, they've basically built a massive tunnel through East L London uh, into St Pancras. Right. That's why it costs so much. But the main the main rub is it it improves capacity massively across the whole network across the southeast. I mean, not only, I mean it was wasn't I mean the old situation where that when the trains were trundling through Kent that didn't satisfy anybody. I mean the, the the Kent commuters you know were annoyed because there were their trains were constrained and delayed by the Eurostar trains, and the, the Eurostar couldn't operate to very you know they they were they could only operate so many trains because the tracks were full of Kent trains as well. Yeah. So, basically, what, what's hap what, what the benefit is, it means you can have trains coming, massive amount of extra tr international trains coming from all over Europe. You know, mostly, uh, the, I mean, no doubt there'll be uh, trains coming from Germany and the Netherlands before in the next few years, which wasn't possible. Well, that's certainly worth six billion pounds of anybody's money. I mean, that's, a, that's part of because, it. Because uh, without it, how, how would they possibly have got here? Oh, yeah, that's right. They could have flown or come by boat or just got a slower train or walked or driven or, you know, any a number of ways. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it, if ideally it will replace lots of, you know, short-distance short, short distance flights. I thought that this company was, wasn't was making money. I thought that they had no chance of ever making any money. I mean, uh, have they changed their, um... It's a very complicated... If you look, I mean, you business can look on Instagram. I mean, even I'm not uh, sad, uh, sad enough to look at the, uh... Well, oh, I, I bet I, you are. <laughs> well, I did look at it, but I can't remember it. I don't mean that in an offensive way. I know what you it? mean. <laughs> it's, very, it's a very complicated history of the funding. Right. You know, dating back to before uh, privatisation. Well, we best not go into that, eh? So it's, yeah, it's... Because we don't want to interrupt this <laughs> thrilling monologue. It's been quite, it's been quite uh, you know, cunning the way they keep selling, reselling the debt, so it's not as... I mean, it's not, it's not as bad as the original for tunnel debt. I mean, so, I mean, uh... So basically, that's the. Uh, so if we live to be a thousand, they will be making their money back, eventually. Yeah. I mean, we'll uh, see it. Yeah, yeah. there's still lots of clever bonds and things. Uh, one thing that you uh, often mention that no one ever picks up on is your comments about empty buses. Or you, you often talk about empty buses in London. Well, I'm. I think I, like everybody in London, is very. Um, I mean, we didn't make much of a fuss about it, and I and I don't think there's many other capital cities in the world that would have just let one of your one of one of if not the icon of the city to just be allowed to be removed from the roads which was the route master bus there can't be anybody in london that doesn't like the route master bus well, it does actually it's the hop on and off ability of it that's the thing because you spend all your life 
in a traffic jam, and the uh, and you, you're pulling your hair out to, because you can see the bus stop, but you can't get off it until you're at the bus stop for health and safety reasons. Well. And so the the man who said that um, what was the phrase? It was something like only a, a cretinous buffoon would take the buses off the road, and that was oh, yeah. Ken's phrase, or more or less. I paraphrase. Uh, he was the man that did it, the cretinous well, buffoon. He was, he was recommended. Basically, he took advice from his. Uh, from the people in TFL. From, right, you know. well, uh, there's no excuse for it. It should have stayed. And what they replaced it with is is a double-decker bus with the top taken off and p and hooked onto the back. So uh, so it takes up I twice mean, as much uh, twice as much road space. But, you, I mean, the other day you were saying that a lot of buses are empty. They are. So if, if buses are so empty in London, how come capacity is so desperate that they have to have bendy buses? Well, it's not desperate. To ha I don't know why they had well, them. There must I mean, be some. Uh, there must be some uh, f a financial reason. Uh, there is. I mean, well, somebody, somebody's making a were... giant profit somewhere, mate. I mean, but I it's not you... a capacity thing because there's never anybody in them. Yeah, that's, that's where you're wrong. Because uh, I, know, I know you don't travel on. I mean, if you travel on routes, you know, all those routes that are bendy bus now. I mean, which, especially the ones which used to be route masters. You remember that you could hardly get on, and especially in rush hour. You'd have to wait for the third, fourth, fifth bus. Right, OK. Well, rush hour may be, but you can't um, extrapolate from rush hour to the rest of the, of the 24 but hours, even, can you? Even, even off-peak. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, really <laughs> for, uh, just for, um, to, to get out of this conversation with you, I'll say that you're completely right, and I apologise. But thanks a lot, Richard. You've been um, educational. Cheers, mate. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if he would feel pain if you plunged him into boiling water. That's a horrible thing to say. I'm very, very sorry. It's just, um... Oh, I was losing the will to live there for a while. So, oh. But it's it's his delivery. It's the way he tells them. Still, nice man. Here is, uh... Catford. Oh, Trixie. No, that was really mean there. That was a very... I'm lashing out wildly. Him. Lovely, lovely person. Sorry about that, mate. Yes, thank you. He was giving it's the pills notes. that I'm on. All right. Okay, you're, you're squeezing me up against an advert, you meanie guy. I'm going to straddle you over it. Are you? Oh, that's very kind. Let me rephrase that. I'm going to um, tease across the break with you. People will be on the edge of their seats. Wow, thank you. How are you? Um, I'm fine. Did you get blown about today? Uh, no, 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 I didn't. Very, very windy. Yes, I, I, I stayed in and I, I, I uh, looked out in the garden. I thought, oh, it's windy. Yeah. So uh, how could you tell? Hmm? How could you tell? Uh, well, I could Things were blowing my, my about. My windows were yeah. rattling and my curtains were blowing. That's right. the, you Hold know, that thought, Trixie. We'll be right back. Great presenters. It's really, really good station. 97.3. 0845 6060973. Nick Abbott. Well, let's get back to it. Trixie. Ah, oh, that was good. That was a little relax, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Not at all. Right. My pleasure. Oh, right. Well, where were we? Um... Oh, yes. I don't know. Oh, we were outside. You were peeking out the window and you'd... I was peeking uh, out the window. Come to the conclusion it was windy. My curtains were blowing, yeah. you know, like crazy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, so I've been holed up in the smallest room in, in... Well, not the loo. In the second smallest room in the flat. And uh, the cat and I... You were holed been... up in the smallest room in the yeah, flat? Yeah, well, I've only... It's not a turned... nuclear fallout. I can only now just turn on my radiators or turn them on and off as I want to. So I can now just have the radiator on in one room and it saves electricity you see or not electricity. oh that's i know oh, that's I know. a really sad picture you're painting for us trixie <laughs> it's terrible you, you can only heat one room no no I, I i it's just that i couldn't turn the radiators off before only the very very poor or the aristocracy can heat no, one no, room no, in their no, house no i can't i shouldn't really talk about it this is terrible no it's um uh, it's it's um it's 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 an expensive it's never mind privately rented <laughs> privately rented right yes. electricity not included in the rent no 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 no, no absolutely not no right. gas or anything no anyway no, enough of that so i was peeping out the window and i've been holed up in a nice small little room with yeah me. i heard yeah well, it's, it's the only room in the house with any heating yes it's no been, wonder it's been lovely and cozy actually yes uh it's i'm worried actually about some um, the, the the north uh, not north, um, the, uh, the, south, the, the southeast coast, 
the... The north, the south, the east, the... I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, you know. My, which my, part my, of the clock? My <laughs> sense of geography is not terribly good. I'm left-handed. Um, oh, well, that explains it. Yes, I mean, west, exactly. west is the only point that you missed. Really? Yeah, you sure it's not in the west? Uh, could be. I'll send you so a compass the in the side, post. It's the, it's the opposite. That's right, I've just learned it's west-east, not east-west. Yeah, and you know how you remember that? Uh, it because is. it spells we... Not, right. not ew. Hey, that, I like that. See? I haven't realised that. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I. Uh, I mean, any fool know north is up, but the west and the east can you, it's like left and right. Sometimes it foxes you. No, it's south. In an emergency, everything goes down, and I, that's where I'm. Sort of <laughs> Doesn't it ever? Yeah. That's with each with each passing second. <laughs> yeah. Every, <laughs> going. Everything's every, going every year south. I change my bra size and hoik them up. You know. Well, I'm glad that you shared that with us. Absolutely. Anyway, I, I've been worried about um, my my ex-husband who's up north, and he's got friends in East Anglia, so I called him, because there's, according to the news, they're going to have one-metre tidal surges or something. Yeah, there's... Um, oh, it's horrible. Uh, uh, yes, if you turn on the news channels, that's all they're talking about now. Yeah, no, I've, 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 been, I've been listening to LBC, and I've, I've been... I, I've been uh, on the, the internet most of the day. Mind you, they did warn us uh, about this. Most of what the weather forecasters say uh, you can dismiss uh, while you're hearing it, but they did say that we were going to have freezing cold weather. Well, we're still to get that. We'll yeah. um, believe that when it gets here. But they did say storms, and we had something of a storm this afternoon. But then it died, died down. Yes. And you know what the sad thing is? All the leaves fell off the trees. I know! And they were so lovely. particularly we... lovely this year. It was beautiful. And there was, there was absolutely no reason to, 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 to pop out for a walk. I, in fact, I looked into the garden and I thought, oh, no. Yeah, too late. They're, they've gone. I've got, you know, the thing is I've got lots of leaves and they, 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 they are everywhere. Yeah, but they're on the ground. Not so lovely there. No, but they cover the, they cover the grass and I'm trying to train the grass to grow as opposed to be covered by the, the leaves. You're trying to train it? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get some nice grass. I've been pulling up all the like downtimes and, uh... It's, uh, I've got some nice fresh shoots of grass. Right, we well, want to get rid of all those leaves because it will restrict grass... That's what happened last grasses year. ...grasses' growth. Precisely. Yeah. So, um... Get your rake out, dear. I've got my rake, yes. And I've got my friend to do the raking for The me. amazing thing is, uh, the trees hold up such a gigantic weight of leaves. I mean, if you put leaves that fall off a tree into a bag... Yes. ...not only does it t take up, uh, the, the cubic space of your house... But it just weighs a ton. I know, it's incredible. How do they hold it up? I, I really don't know. I, um, I, I, I really don't know. It's probably got something to do with nature. Well, there's probably something to do with that, yeah. yes, which is why we really should recycle in the back garden, but we don't want to get onto that subject. No, we it is like an education, this show, isn't it? It is no. like an education. No, not really, but no. you're going to get all the animal activists onto you and possibly the Richard activists onto you. You know. The what, activists? Cruel, cruel to, to Richards and lobsters. Richards? Yes, absolutely. That Richards. nice man who was talking Oh, to the you. nice man, right. Yes? Well, it's not Richards in general. No, no. I was no. just lashing out at him personally, and I'll never do that again. I I'm hope very, not. very no, sorry. No, I hope no, I really I've learnt my you. lesson. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very disappointed in you. And remember, <laughs> by the way, you know. You are dresses, not. Hairdressers have feelings, too. They're, yeah, hairdressers are people, too. But you haven't yeah. eaten your hairdresser. You haven't tasted him, so. Uh, no. No. It'd be a bit tough, I think. Possibly, yes. Anyway, you've, you're, you're, you're leading us down strange routes now, Trixie. Uh, yes, uh, lobsters and uh, shrimps and uh, prawns also have cholesterol, I would like to warn you. Oh, they do, yeah. But all uh, the best things are going to kill you anyway, so you might as well just hold your nose and dig in. I'm going to be, be a beautiful corpse and die really young. You well, I'll look forward to seeing that. Oh, well, I, I, I hope that uh, I see yours before you see mine. <laughs> well, I guarantee you, Trixie, if you show me yours... Anyway, okay. at this point, I have to go. All right. Cheers, my dear. Ta-da. Bye. Here is uh, Hornchurch. Hello, Tom. Hello, Nick. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. This way. Trains and the Channel Tunnel. Yeah. The reason why they have to slow down is because of heat. Heat? Yeah. If they go too quick, they generate too much heat, and the air conditioning system can't cope. Is that right? Yeah, things like buckled train lines and, you know. And, you mean um, they, they, they heat up the air... Or yeah. the, right. No, they heat up the air in the in the in the tunnel. Yeah, you've got um, a few sort of air conditioning like systems, if you like, along with you, you know, that, that keep the tunnel cool and, and what have you. Have you been uh, Have you been on it? 
I have, several times. Isn't it amazing? I mean, you do, when you come out of the tunnel, you realise how fast you're going, because in, inside yeah. the tunnel, of course, you are sensorily deprived, and so you don't really know right. how quickly you're going. Yeah. Uh, and you come out, and you think, oh, blimey, that was, we're, we're basically crawling along here. But yeah. you come out the other side so quickly. Yeah, you do, you do. They do speed up on the, on the last sort of bit of it, it were. But, but um, what I mean is that the, 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 the distance in time that it takes to go underneath the channel is yeah. so brief. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not all that far. I mean, I think it's only about sort of 20 miles, I guess, something like that, I think, is the actual crossing. Right, I wouldn't want to swim it. No, that's true. That's so true. Sitting down with a glass of champagne yeah. while you, um... Yeah. They, they used to actually go quicker through the tunnel, but since the, um... Because, you know, there was that fire a few years ago when they, when, when one of the freight ones, not not the Eurostar, but oh, one of the freight yeah. trains caught right there, yeah, that, 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 that fire basically put the kibosh on them going quick through the tunnel, so right. they, they, then sl they slowed it down. Oh, Another wow. health and safety thing, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's well, the bane well, of our lives. Isn't it just? Isn't it just? So that's the facts. Okay. That well, uh, thanks for straightening that out for us, Tom. No problem, Nick. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. Cheers. Um, I do like the train a lot, actually. Have you, have you been on the train there, Helen? What, the Eurotunnel? Yeah. Yeah. It's I'll like flying. I've, I've said this before, and it's worth repeating. Well, maybe it isn't. I don't know, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's like flying, but with all of the irritating bits cut out. It is brilliant. It is great. Mm. Uh, if only they went to, um... Well, I suppose they are uh, opening up, um, Europe now. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, and I mentioned the other day that I did investigate going to Amsterdam on the train, because I thought, how great would that be? Um, you could, you do have to change in Brussels, I think, so you can't yeah. just sit there and get drunk <laughs> and just <laughs> relax completely all the way. But, um, I did put my details in, and it came back with a price, £900. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Who's going to do that? And then some man uh, uh, explained to me the other day that he had uh, got the same thing for like, 180 pounds, which I find doubtful. Right. But um, but that's the problem with it. It's a little too expensive, unless they're advertising with us, in which case it's worth every penny. Well, I've travelled to France for about 90 quid. Right. Uh, which I think is I think that's I'll that's pay okay. That. Yeah. Yeah. I've I paid a lot more than that. Mm. But then I, 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 I travel when the uh, Rugby World Cup was on. Oh well, that's that's why. Probably yeah. But when you get to, when I got to Paris, there was no sense that there was a World Cup of any sport uh, going on in Paris at the time. Paris seemed to be open and um, expansive and empty. It was really quite surprising. Really? Yeah, there didn't well, seem to be anybody there, just me. <laughs> it is amazing getting off. Uh, is it Gare du Nord? Gare du Nord, yeah. And just walking, you know, to, into a cafe and. Oh, and I coffee. walked straight to the cab rank. Okay. <laughs> Cafes had to wait. There was the unpacking and the, you know, all the rest of it. And the moaning about your hotel room. Mm. Like that. And then if you moan, you'll get switched. If you just put up with it, then you'll have to put up with it. Yeah. Don't be British. But but it's quite good to moan in France, isn't it? Because that gets a reaction here. It, it just gets everyone else moaning. Well, it's our national obsession, isn't mm. it? Because we, we, uh, we like to say all mustn't grumble. But the phrase mustn't grumble uh, follows a giant grumble. Usually, yeah. 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 Oh, you know, my lambago and I've got my piles and, you know, all of that. But mustn't grumble. <laughs> you having had your ear bent for the last half an hour by an old deer that's been grumbling. Still, they've got to get it out. Better out than in, eh? Absolutely. We we told on, on the train, um, on, on your train, not to bring any ham or cheese with you. <laughs> if you had a ham sandwich to put it in the bin right now. It, really? That was the announcement to that effect, yeah. Uh, which well, I thought was bizarre. Like Jack Bauer on 24. <laughs> Drop the ham! Step away from the mm. ham! Something like that, yeah. Well, why? Because they have better cheese there? Better ham? I thought that you weren't allowed to bring um, meat and dairy products from outside the EU, but within... Actually, do you know what? I think it was when the foot and mouth... Ah, right. The, f the first one, about four or five years ago, I think it was then, that you couldn't bring any ham, which I, I don't get, really. Uh, no. You couldn't bring any meat products, but I remember specifically him saying ham. Right. In, in a French accent, which I thought Ooh, was really odd. so right? yummy. 7.45. Here's Travel Now with Alan Joyce. Thanks, Nick. The M3 still has two lanes closed. OBC 97.3. 0845-6060-973. Nick Abbott. I enjoy working with people. And I really mean that, Vincent. 
Hi, hi, yeah. Vincent. Uh, Vincent Majestic here, uh, London. Um, I've been holding on, sorry, I just, it's all been happening. Uh, it's nice to be listening to what's been going on. I like to just mention that, uh, Obviously, the privatisation, because I was a clippy uh, of the uh, underground, did play a big part uh, of, um, if you like, where people had to decide where they would go in, because it was quite a heavy cost, you know. I'm sorry, from... wait, 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 back up. You were a clippy, that, yeah. uh, by which you mean a bus conductor? Um, c correct, yes, right. right. And, and, and then what? Um, it went up from 40p to a pound. What did? But, but, you know, like the journey... Uh, end of journey, so which was like, um, you know, like 200 and you know, 50 percent rise, if you like, right? Uh, and obviously, then they made the amendment for, for the young children uh, as well that they couldn't be traveling after 9 30. Yeah, uh, they, they then had to pay adult fee. But what's the and, overall point that you make? I'm a bit confused. What are you saying? Oh, I was just agreeing that, um, the privatization. Uh, in the end, did see quite a, uh, you know, like, he, he actually stalled things a bit to maintaining, um, you know, like, the bus service and the underground, you know, that was all. But uh, right. my main issue that Still I phoned up about Go on. was, was uh, Thin Lizzy. Thin Lizzy, yes. Thin Lizzy, correct. Thin, thin um, Lizzy. Rock and roll! Yeah. I see it, rock and roll, man, and let it rock. Uh, I'm, you know, and Phil Lynott, and I just wonder what it was about him, uh, about them, because I just believe they were some great band, you see, uh, in the 70s, and they never really filled their full right of recognition, you know. Well, because they didn't have the songs made. They had a few good songs, not much. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what it was, but I just wondered what it was. Was it he was a bit imposing because he was, like, a half-cast and half-Irish? Yeah, he's, he, in, in the history of uh, recorded music, he's the only uh, Irish, black, bass-playing lead singer that any band has ever had. What a combo. <laughs> he's quite true, quite right. Um, and I would just like to make a message to my, uh, just to my um, cousin today, Al, Al because he's uh, taking his driving test, and I hope in success today. All right. Uh, and uh, that I've just uh, moved house. Uh, he's all right. He'll know what I mean. I've moved... All right, what's your new address, was. Vincent? Uh, it's, uh, number two... Whoa! <laughs> well, saved by the bell, I think. But thanks a lot, anyway. That was, um... That, I've, I have no idea what that call was about. Hands up, anybody who has a clue what that call was about? Hands up in there? No. No one? He was very odd. All over well, he was place. a very nice man, but uh, he, was, he was, yeah, all over the place, I think he's right. When, mm. when you call, you must make notes. You must have your, your mind razor sharp and in a linear Focused. form. That's right. Focused is exactly correct. <laughs> we must have more focus on this show. Oh, in fact, focus would be great on this show. Rock and roll! <laughs> Let's have Hocus Pocus on right now. Here we go. Hi I haven't got that one. Nope. All right, I'll just carry on with this. Here is uh, Sheffield. Jessica. Um, hello, Nick. Jessica. Um, I half thought with the demise of the Lee that the wacky caller might have disappeared, but... Was he wacky? He's still, yeah, obviously he's alive and kicking. He didn't seem wacky to me. He seemed the very antithesis of wacky. Well, <laughs> I think he was an Ian Lee kind of caller. Really? Yeah. Ian would have cut him off after 30 seconds. Oh, after well. He failed. Never mind. I fail again. Never mind. I was just trying to get to the bottom of it, but apparently there was no bottom. I don't think there was any point. No. But that's the point of Ian Lee's callers, really. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, since you're talking about transport, um, my normal mode of transport, because I commute between London and Sheffield, and normally I take the train, which I love. Yeah, let the train take the strain. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the train. It's a two and a half hour journey. I can get stuff done. I can listen to stuff on my iPod or read a book. Um, Other MP3 players are available. Yeah, of course they are. Um, but today they're striking. I'm not quite sure why. All uh, I know is it's the third money, time. Money, health and weeks. safety, something like that. Yeah, something. Bound to be. Um, but what it meant was that I drove today. I don't normally drive from London to Sheffield. Yeah. I know that you've claimed that you used to drive from Leeds to London. Three hours. Well, you used to say two hours. Did I? Yeah, two? definitely. No, not two. Surely not. How far is it? Well, it's 151 miles to Sheffield. Oh, well, like I said, two hours. Yeah. Um, well, I drove back at four o'clock this morning, 
and I got back at sort of 6.30 in my car. Yeah. But because I, I wasn't used to that experience, um, I had to stop at a service station halfway up. Why? Um, to a bit of a caffeine intake. Oh, yeah. Um, before I killed myself and other people. Yes. Well, uh, there is that point at which you think, whoa, was I asleep there? Well, and you think, oh, it's time to pull over. Don't, yeah. really, I've done that before. That happens during this show a lot. Yeah. Um, but I haven't been to a service station in ages. And, um, Aren't they lovely? Well, they're kind of odd. Um, I was there for about 20 minutes, and all of life is there in 20 minutes. Yeah. It's like a Joe and Carl show. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's... Have you, have you been to a service station recently? Uh, only enough to know that the the very first thing that you see when you go in are um, uh, gaming uh, machines. Exactly. For the 24-hour gambler. Yeah. And they and they they seem to be uh, being played by kids who've, who look like they've been there all day long. Well, I saw a lot of lorry drivers. One of the weirdest things I saw was this bunch of lorry drivers that I think were sort of French stroke, I don't know... Polish or something. Oh, the French-Polish lorry yeah. drivers, yeah. And they were just sat outside their massive, huge, articulated lorries, um, enjoying a glass of wine. Oh, nice. <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's great. Um, partaking of a little vino. Yeah. Um, in the French-Polish manner, yeah. Exactly. And I thought, well, I'm joining the road with them in a second, mm. and in the state that I'm in, you know, yeah. quite tired. Keep your eyes on the uh, road and your hands on the wheel, and yeah. we'll hope the rest of that song goes. It was quite a lot of weird people in a small space and um but i enjoyed it in a way i was there for about half an hour and um i, I learned quite a lot about life and to know that it's better to take the train yeah and let it take the strain really and, <clears throat> and never buy coffee in a in a motorway service station well, actually you know what it wasn't bad and mm. um, one thing that i saw at the um service station that i was quite surprised about is that a very well-known high street store um Shall I name it? I'm not going to say anything bad. Well, no, they're they're selling stuff there. Yeah, they are. I know. And, and as soon as you see see their name, you think, oh, uh, thank God. <laughs> exactly. It yeah. Means I haven't got to go to Burger King. For, and well, I've got a very this, nice no, she sandwich. she made the mistake of mentioning Burger King. Sorry. Other burgers are available. Of Excellent they product. Are. Anyway, Jessica, I've got to go. All right, then. You've just stepped just a little bit over the line. This is LBC. BC 97.3. Affirmative. 0845 6060 Nick Abbott. So Kate, Moss pic- Kate Moss's picture was in the uh, the new news um, uh, today. Party-loving Kate Moss goes on a boozy bender with her new transvestite pal, DJ Jody Harsh. Picture of um, the two of them in the back of a cab. Supermodel Kate, 33, and boyfriend Jamie Hintz, 39, jumped in a cab with a crossdresser. The trio had been to a bash in plush carriages, Claridge's Hotel in Mayfair in central London, but they left just before midnight, going um, uh, with uh, uh, a pal to Davinia Taylor's home. Who's that? Hmm. They just mention it as though we should know who that is. Another model? Uh, if, if you buy supermarket checkout magazines, then you'll undoubtedly know who Davinia Taylor is. One fan said they will fan... Uh, from Kate Moss. Fan? Really? Are, pe- are women... Uh, come on, girls. You're both ladies. Are you fans of Kate Moss? No. One fan said they were laughing and joking as they sped off. I don't think they were going home for a cup of cocoa and bed. Oh, oh, oh. Kate was looking casual in a black jacket and messy hair. Maybe she needs some style tips from uh, tr- Tranny and Susanna. But my thought about this is... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. Kate Moss has got a five-year-old child, right? Okay. How many women with five-year-old t- children do you know that goes out partying quite as much as Kate Moss does? I mean, if if I had a five-year-old child at home, I think partying would be way off the list, don't you? I mean, I think that my she, partying days would be over. She's entitled to a night out. But it's not a night out. It's, it's a, <laughs> it seems on the basis of the coverage she gets in the newspapers, it's every night. I'm that hard to believe. Yeah. Well, let's hope not, A. Eh? I'm sure she's an excellent mother. You see, 97.3. Correct. 0845 Nick Abbott. Hi, honey. How are you? I'm fully on board with um, the actions taken by, uh, uh, what's his name? The special one. The Ethbethial one. What's his Jose. name? 
Huh? Jose? Yeah, Jose Marino. Um, Marino. Like roughing up 12-year-old kids. No, but the kid was rude. He alluded to that in the... Uh, the nice man alluded to that in the uh, news broadcast. He was giving him a bit of lip. So, in the uh, manner of uh, our forefathers, he gave him a metaphorical clip about the ear, which, uh, you know, never did uh, us any harm. Am I right? Absolutely. It's a bit... What? Like, well, no, it's a bit... Oh, a 12-year-old versus... How old is he? 44-year-old man or something? So? Oh. Well, he didn't belt him. He didn't... <laughs> he still... Well, he, 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 he did that, didn't he? He, he tweaked his, his ear. ear. And, yeah, and, good. And, yeah, and, and probably got some of his hair by accident. Or Quite something. right, too. Yeah. <laughs> I bet there's not a person in this audience who isn't uh, fully on board with that sort of behaviour. Am I right? Be polite. That's the watchword. Isn't that right, Rob? Oh, definitely. Be polite, yeah. It's Robert from the Ronda. Oh, I love it when you say that. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Abbott. How are you? Well, you're over here now, then. Yes. That must mean you're getting sacked very soon. No doubt. <laughs> a promotion and you know. Is yeah. that a new theme tune I hear? Uh, yeah, yes, but in the mode of. What does that mean? It's, uh, the, from the same source. Oh, right. Can we, cut, can we classify that as your third ever theme tune? Um, I suppose so, yeah. Right. I have a question for you, and it's for you to decide. Only I am the decider. Only a few people in this audience probably know what I'm talking about. Right. Uh, Me and George Bush, where do the we are the deciders. Absolutely. I have access to the phone number, home phone number, don't ask me how, of Elizabeth from Cheddar. How? I got it a few years ago, I called her, but fine. And right. would you like me to tell her where you are? Yes, absolutely. Right, okay then. Give it a week and she'll be back on the air. <laughs> okay. Um... Maybe I haven't made the right decision there. <laughs> It'd be every night and every other show. Yes. Well, I suppose I can always decide whether to take her on a daily basis. When you when you were off the air for a while, I, I found... I got her number somehow, and uh, I used her for my own purposes. Uh, OK. This is a person that used to call me at another place that became so popular as a caller that she had her own fan website. And fun. And and um, produce. She sold t-shirts. T-shirts were sold in her name. She had um, mouse mats and all sorts of stuff. Thongs. Thongs. That's <laughs> right. The I thought you said songs. No. Thongs. thongs. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, right. Well, an awful thought. That, Thank you to look forward to. Yes. Right. Has your accent ever changed? Has my accent ever changed? You, you brought up in Scotland, you said. Yeah, and when I was in Scotland, I was determined, as a 14-year-old, uh, when I first went up there, not to get a Scottish accent. So I actually went out of my way to watch the Sweeney in order to uh, <laughs> brush up on me Cockney. Did it work? Um, well, I don't seem to have a Scottish burr, well, so maybe. It. I've been listening... I, I plucked up a courage the other day to listen to an old tape of me calling you. Oh, yeah. Bloody hell, my accent's changed. Has it? Yes. I'm very anglicised now. I used to be very... Welsh, un unbearably can't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> Welsh people are up in arms. Uh, well, you want to get in the media, don't you? Well, sort of. I well, really it's, um, it, it used to be the watchword of everybody who wanted to get on the radio and on television to lose whatever regional accent it was that you had, because they were considered to um, make you sound stupid. But uh, now it seems that the regional accents are just the very thing. You've got, you've got to have a regional accent. Yeah, some are uh, a little more annoying than others, though. That um, a new new castle man, the t t bloke from the Tyneside that they get to do the Big Brother thing, that's yeah. just plain silly. That's just a step too far. No one speaks like that, do they? I'll tell you what, something else is slightly annoying, because I'm sure the BBC used to have standards, but they've now got, like, a <laughs> African correspondent, or he's something like Africa or East Asia or something like that. Yeah. His name's Johnny Diamond. Johnny Diamond? Yeah. Some like second-hand car salesman. Yeah, or yeah. A, or a DJ. Hey, reporting on your latest death, Johnny Diamond. Johnny Diamond. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> Johnny anyway. Diamond. I know. It's what, listen out for it. They all got they all got funny names. There's there's Gordon Farcar. Yes. A Five Live and others. Anyway, have you seen the list? No doubt you have. Of who's going in the jungle. Well, I glanced at it briefly, and I recognised maybe one or two of the of the uh, famous celebrities that they're, uh, are going to be um, all over uh, ITV soon. I, who are all those people? Well, let's give you a test, shall we? Yeah. Anna Ryder Richardson. 
All right, now you girls can join in on this because I, I I don't know who any of these people are. You, I don't have a clue. You you might be more clued in and plugged in to um, the modern society. I say more women would know who she was than men. Right, Perhaps. Anna Ryder Richardson. Richardson. No idea. Has she got something to do with interior design? Yes, she has. Oh, oh really? Half really? a point. <laughs> who is she then? She used to be on changing rooms. Right. There we are. I have no idea what that is. Let me guess. It was uh, she went into some um, uh, poor dope's house, which was covered in uh, dog hair and uh, pictures of uh, d uh, dead family members. Diana. And it was painted purple. And they said, um, just r remove the clutter and paint it cream. It's the same thing on every one of those shows. And um, and, and then they come to find out they sold it within about ten seconds. Yeah. Gemma Atkinson. Gemma Atkinson. Favourite. Oh, we're shaking our heads all around. Give us a clue. Um, Channel Four Soap. Oh, um, Hollyoaks. Yes. Is that still going? Apparently, I've never watched. Has it. anything happened yet? Uh, I don't know. How long has it been on? Uh, forever. Is it? Didn't that start when Channel Four started? Hollyoaks. No, about ten years old. Now. Right. Bikini friendly former Hollyoaks actress. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. She's yeah. a tabloid babe. Oh, this is an easy one, I would have thought. Anybody that's under the age of 50 and is a woman in the media is a tabloid babe. That's the only thing you're allowed to be as a woman in the media. Does Christine Hamilton come into that category? <laughs> no. But she's not under 50, surely. I don't know, probably 49. Well, I Don't judge a woman. Because that's pretty close to my age. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Yeah. I was 12 when I listened to him, I'm like 22 now. Oh, but I'm young. Rodney Marsh. Rodney Marsh. Well, he's a footballer. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah that's that's about the only one that I recognise. Here's the A-list. What's he doing in there, by the way? I What's mean, he doing in there? Well, yeah. making money, I know, but... I think he was sacked from his previous job for making a tasteless joke. Is that saying? Anyway. Well, it's hard to believe that uh, an ex-footballer would make a tasteless joke. I know. I don't believe it. How about Koo Stark? Koo Stark? Yeah, well, yeah. she rings a yeah. bell. Wasn't she married to a Rolling Stone? Well, it's not got that in, in my information. Can start. Former model? Uh, possibly. Wasn't she married to uh, Bill Wyman or something? Hang on. When she was 15 or something like that? Well, she's known for being the other half of someone, put it that way. Who? The former girlfriend of Prince Andrew. Of uh, Prince Andrew. Right. You remember him? He gets paid by us. Yeah, he does doesn't he? lots of good work. Yeah, I'm certain that he does, yeah. I he, know. He has to travel on uh, a royal flight to all four corners of, uh, of the five-star world, looking for good work to do. I know a girl who, whose partner lives with the chef of a famous royal. I you do what this. now? I know a girl whose yeah. partner lives with the chef of a chef of a famous royal. Well, that's so far removed from, um, from fame, you, you could... Princess Anne's cook. You'd need a uh, pair of binoculars. You know Princess Anne's cook. I know, I know the girlfriend of Princess Anne's friends. Oh, you, oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what special dietary requirements does she have? Well, apparently she came home ranting one day, and this is just allegations, I can't, yeah. you know. But she wasn't very happy that she wanted cold lobster, but it was actually warm. Well, you could understand how that would upset you. It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Malcolm McLaren. What a life, eh? Malcolm McLaren, Talky Malky's going in there. He is. <laughs> wow. Well. Need money. Why does he need money? I thought he was a, um... What's the word? Argumentative. <laughs> yeah, that, producer. That, that's true. But a um, an impresario. He's a uh, what do you call it? Entrepreneur. A, yeah, well, legend, isn't it? Uh, an entrepreneur of bands. What's that called? Isn't he married to Vivian Westwood? Or used to be. Vivian Westwood. The designer. Well, they started it. Was it Vivian Westwood that they started the sex shop with? Yeah. Right. I don't think he was. Is he married to her? I don't oh, really know. A close connection. Hasn't she done well? Dame Vivian Westwood. Oh, well, yeah, um, of course. Mr. Nick. Who Janice else? Dickinson. Janice Dickinson. Yeah, we all know her. Remember her from, um, uh. Yeah. Not Rock Follies. No. She's Isn't a... she the s a model? Yes! Oh, God. Cool. point. So, the, all the men are people that have actually done something with their lives, and all the women are modus. Well, Is that right? Let's, let's get those on the list first. Okay. Uh, uh, ja uh Keris Matthews. Keris Matthews. Oh, uh, singer. Singer, yeah. Welsh. 
Is she the world's most irritating woman, uh, as uh, just um, judged on a poll by whoever it was? I doubt it. She was in a band, wasn't she? Doesn't she do the? Uh, isn't she the the woman from the f frozen supermarket? Pardon? No, that's um, that's uh, yeah. You know, there's a supermarket that's that deals in. Kerry Katona, it's isn't it? Oh right. Yeah. yeah. Keris Matthews, Kerry Keris. You know, you from understand Catatonia. how I'd be confused. Yeah. How about this famous one? Mark Bannerman. Oh! Do you remember him? No. He used to be in EastEnders. <laughs> Did he? As Gianni DeMarco. Oh, well, That's now it's uh, really not Bannerman. coming back to me. So, this, uh, is that the list? No, there's three more. Okay. Okay, here's, here's television eating itself. Katie Hopkins. Who's that? She was on The Apprentice. That thing with Alan Sugar. She was, an ap she was a contestant on she The Apprentice. Win. She was a contestant. Uh, well, I bet I know which one it is. It was, she was the one that everyone said was a giant word beginning with B. They call her Super Bitch. Right. <laughs> I tried to <laughs> dance around it uh, carefully, well, but you just blurted it out. It's well got done. A super in front. Yeah. How about Jason J. Brown? Ah, oh, well, I'm glad you said Jason J. Brown to distinguish him from Jason Brown. I don't know who either of those people are. He was in Boy Band Five. Five. So much better than four, don't you agree? Oh, it's 25 years of four. Marvellous. Oh, this is my favourite, the Club Bunch. This is what I'm going to tune in for, specifically for this person. Is this and finally? If you want it to be. Christopher Biggins! Christopher Biggins? Yes! <laughs> Do you, you love? He'll be arriving in drag, thinking he's uh, going to a panto. And Joan, darling, will send her love and flowers. Right. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. Though. All right, thanks a lot, Rob. Doodle pip. Cheers. There's another program that we can put in our diaries to avoid straight away. It's 8.16. <laughs> Travel now with Alan Joyce. Thanks, Nick. The N3 still ahead. LBC 97.3. 0845 6060 Nick Abbott. Right, so what are we doing? Carol, we're doing Betty in Dartford. Hello, Betty. Oh, hello, Nick. Um... Uh, did, do you remember seeing uh, on the TV um, a serial in Africa with Amanda Holden when he was a vet? When he was a vet? Yeah, and she, you know, they lived there. And what I'm trying to get at is, you know, they're all on about Sir Ian Blair's, Blair has got to resign yeah. over this shooting. They are. Well, in that serial that what they did they shot the animals with a pellet and knocked them out before they took them to the surgery yeah well don't you think it would be more sensible for our policemen to have guns with those pellets in and knock the people just out instead of shooting them in the head seven times mm? yeah <laughs> and you see not right. having being elderly, disabled and housebound, I haven't got the internet. And in the news, there's always questions at night, like there was tonight. But you've got a, it's always www.text or email. That must be very annoying. Well, yeah. all us elderly, we haven't got the money to afford internet. Right, plus you wouldn't be able to figure it out if you had. Pardon? Um, like, to learn a computer from scratch would be a nightmare for you. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> I'm 85. <laughs> um, and so, the pellet thing. All right, well, I'll... Yeah, well, um, don't yeah. you think that that's more sensible... Than shooting someone in the head seven times? Yeah. Having all these guns and shooting. I mean, it's all over this um, sh shooting, you know, uh, that M Mendes boy two years ago, you know, who they thought was a terrorist. Well, if they'd got those pellets and they just knocked him out, and then they could have handcuffed him. Then he would still be around today. Yeah, he'd yeah. still be alive, wouldn't right. he? Right. Good thinking, Betty. All right, cheers, my dear. I'll um, throw that out there, all right? Yeah. All right, thanks, Betty. Yeah. What a nice yeah. lady. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the... Uh, I don't really want to get into... Um, I, I really don't want to have discussion about that. What three things are you, Nick? What three things am I? Mm. Just, I will say one thing about that. They shot him seven times in the head, but didn't they shoot more than seven times and missed on several occasions? He was on the floor, the policeman was on top of him, 
and he still missed. Does that suggest marksmanship to you? I've not heard that. Yeah, I think so. I think he shot more times than he actually hit him. <laughs> wow. Uh, no, uh, that's just from memory. That's just oh, from okay. uh, reading the... Uh, so it may or may not be... Uh, may or... May, yeah, may or may not be true, but I think that's what I read, which does suggest to me that uh, if he's... Uh, that's just not excellent marksmanship, you'd have to say. I mean, he wasn't really a moving target, was he? Mm. He was on the floor. Anyway, that's uh, not really something I want to talk about. Uh, what three things am I? Mm. Would well, you remember Betty? She just said she's elderly. Oh. She's disabled and housebound. That's the way she described herself. I thought it was curious the way that's the way she described herself before she, you know, told a story. I think that, uh, that there is a certain age after which, and I don't know what that age is. I'm keen to find out. When I get there, I'll tell you that you say what age you are before you say anything else. Now she, Betty, very nice lady, she gave us that extra information before she told us how old she was, but people of a certain age always tell you how old they are before they tell you anything else. I think it's, I think the bottom line is probably 64. Right. I think it's, I think it's 64, you wouldn't say that. But maybe 65, certainly 75, you might say that. Maybe that's Paul McCartney's chat-up line. Oh, I'm 65. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he seems like a nice man, though, doesn't he? Mm, lovely. Yeah. I mean, but the two of them, really. I mean, Heather and Paul in the same house, it's like, oh. I'm not one of these who ascribe to the notion that Paul McCartney is a saint walking among us. I just don't get it. I don't. How can anybody have that much money? What's he going to do with it? He's keeping hold of it, isn't he? For yeah, apparently, appa apparently <laughs> so. <laughs> he could uh, buy a cover for the country on a rainy day. Why don't people like that, who have a billion pounds in the bank, do what these um, people in America now? It's like competitive giving in America now. George Soros. The... Um, close to the home, there's that guy in Scotland who... who made a whole heap of money. That's right. And, th and now spends the whole of his time just giving, giving it away. Because yeah. it, it makes that much interest that that's his full-time job. And if you uh, ascribe to the notion that um, every action is selfish, that you give uh, money to charity for selfish reasons, I mean, you are doing good, so it's better than, uh, than not, but you're doing it because it makes you feel better. Mm. Well, so what? Um, you, you know, feel better and be doing uh, some good while you're doing it. But I think to hang on to that much money is a bit perverse, really. I mean, what's it doing? Just it, It's just making more money for him. I just think, is it Will Gates giving away bi a billion pounds? Well, you call him dollars. Will. I'll call him Bill. Oh, sorry, what did I say? <laughs> Will. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I suppose essentially he is Will. Yeah. Um, yes, that's right. He's giving away all of his money. And there's another guy who's given away even more. And aren't they competing? I forget his name. Aren't they competing with each other to see? Yeah. Is it not George Soros or it's uh, no? It's Warren Buffett. Okay. Crazy name, crazy guy. Uh, that's right. They, they've um, they, they have so much money that they're going to spend the rest of their lives trying to figure out how to give it away. Yeah. And people like Paul McCartney and people like um, well, I don't know. They mention any of a famous a billionaire rather than just acquiring things. Wouldn't it be a lot better to just give it away because? After your first hundred million, I mean, I can understand people with, um, like I read a report uh, from someone who hires out yachts to millionaires, and he says he much prefers people who are worth over, are worth a hundred million to people who, who are only, in inverted commas, worth ten million, because the people who are worth ten million, they can't really relax with the money that they're spending on this yacht, because it's a, it's, uh, he was saying that it's a relatively um, tentative amount of money to have. You could lose it all if you just went crazy and started spending. But if you've got a hundred million, well, I mean, you, you could be insane 24 hours a day and still not get through it for, if you live to be 200. Mm. So once you've got a hundred million, just give the rest of it away. Wouldn't that be a good idea, mm -hmm. Sir Paul? Is that why we don't like him? Um, I'm just, it's one of the reasons that, I, that I'm, I'm, I'm not um, as in love with him as the rest of the country appears to be, although I have my doubts about that. Mm. But the, the, the other reason is that we just have the, his sainthood rammed down our throats uh, by, the, uh, by the press all the time. 
partly because they've decided that Heather McCartney is the world's most evil woman. Yeah. I'm sure that's not true. But in order to uh, make it seem, make her seem all the worse, they make everything that Paul does seem all the better. I mean, the reports of them walking hand in hand on the sandy shore of Long Island or wherever they were and sharing a romantic meal and how wh what a wonderful human being this new woman in his life was and and she's done you know wonderful work for charity and she's selfless and on and on and on as they're describing Mother Teresa here mm -hmm. just in order to make Heather seem all the worse <laughs> well, uh, there can't be another person that hasn't actually committed a crime that you can think of that's being treated worse by the press than Heather McCartney. What's going that's on what there? That's what she said herself, wasn't it? Pretty Was much. it? I think so. Well, I saw her briefly on the uh, program where she blew her top. Yeah. And I just saw her, the look on her face, and I thought, oh, I've just had breakfast. I don't really want to hang around and uh, and look at that. But it looks like it's an ill-advised move. Mm. But um, but I can't think of anybody else who's uh, who's come uh, in for so much invective from the press who hasn't actually killed someone can you think of a single person in the last 20 years there is, well jim jim davidson no i mean <laughs> a certain section of the press doesn't like him very much but it's not really on the same scale is it what's poor heather done to deserve this really i mean there's people that uh, that, that do kill people who, who get better press than she does anyway that's me uh, sticking up for the underdog this bc 97.3 Oh eight four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Nick Abbott. Are you trying to tell me that this is your act? <laughs> Barnet, Mirel Marbell. Hello, Nick. How you doing? All right. Um, I just wanted. I've got my funny. Oh, I was going to agree with you about um, Paul McCartney. Naturally. The, the, the state sainthood, I don't understand it. No, I don't get it either. No, I don't, you know, he's, he can't do anything wrong, and Heather's the paragon from hell. Yes. And, I, you know, eight, how much? How, how many million? Eight hundred million? Something like that. I mean, just you can't I imagine it. No, I can't. I, and I know somebody's going to come and say, "Oh, he does all this work for charity." Does he? Well, exactly. Does he? <laughs> well, I mean, I know Elton John is supposed to do a lot of work for charity, but uh, but he's another one. He throws a lot of parties for charity. I don't know if he is behind the scenes, you know, serving soup in the kitchens for homeless people and, uh, you know, getting his hands dirty, but what it seems to me is he he throws a lot of glamorous parties for charity, oh, which no. which isn't really... <laughs> it's not really in the... in the, um... in the mould of charitable work, is it? That's just having a party. Yeah, but I people think... think that he's, um... he's a saint for doing that. I, I think it's a sainthood that I really object to. I mean... I don't, I don't know Heather McCartney personally, and I don't think anybody else does. But it's like they're cutting, cutting her to pieces. And you know the the, the way in which she blew her top. Mm, I didn't see it, but I heard about it. I did hear about it. We all would have done that because can you imagine what it's like to be monstered by the British press? I it must be the worst thing that could happen to you without actually uh, needing hospitalisation. Do you know, Nick, we're on the same... Normally, we, we don't always agree, but we're on a completely the same level today. Right. I don't think I could um, take it. I really don't. I don't think anybody uh, no. could take it without going a bit loopy. I mean, to have them camped out on your doorstep every day and for your face to be uh, in the papers and, and for them to take everything that you say mm -hmm. uh, deliberately the wrong way and to paint you as this awful, evil person... Uh, it just must uh, f flip your mind. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't believe for one minute that Paul McCartney is a saint that the British press tried to make him out to be. No. I, d I don't think there's such thing living in this world. Do you know what I mean? Good and bad in all of us. Yeah. And I, I just, you know, she, she flipped her lid and she went ballistic and all this. But can you blame her? Well, no, absolutely no. not, no. And mm -hmm. the, um, and, and the, the, what the British press are doing is that they're... Like bullies in a playground, they're goading her to react. Yeah. And like a bully in a playground, when somebody starts complaining about their behaviour, they're taken aback. They can't believe it. How dare you uh, tell us not to continue to attack you? <laughs> it's like, you know what it is, Nick? I'll tell you what it is. It's kicking someone when they're down. Yes. You know, whatever happened in their marriage, just between those two, and I... I don't believe marriages fail because one person, I think it's 50-50 half the time, occasionally it's one person's fault, right? So, leaving that bit apart, and then, you know, she's, I, you, can you imagine taking on someone with as much money as Paul McCartney's got, the top lawyers, I think he's, 
late wife's brother is defending him. He's a top lawyer in the States, okay? He's one of the parties that's actually going through with his divorce. One of the top lawyers, and or barristers or whatever. And it doesn't matter how much money Heather McCartney might have now, she's got nothing to compete with him. I mean, if I was Paul McCartney and... I would just give a give a fifty million. What possible difference could it make to him? I mean, that he would miss that amount of money. That's walking around with spare change to him. This is what I can't understand either. Somebody, I mean, everybody's saying, well, why should they? She's only been married for four years. Wouldn't you rather? Bearing in mind, there's a daughter. I think um, three or four. Wouldn't you rather, you know, three or four years old, just pay her? I mean, twenty million to me is, is um, you know, I couldn't even imagine. Just to get it over exactly. with. Exactly. To him, it is nothing. Get it over with. Put it in your past. But and usually when... Get on with your life. But often, not usually, but often when relationships break up, it becomes very... Uh, they break up for, for the reason that they can't stand each other anymore. And so he probably doesn't want to give her a, a penny because he hates her now and in much the same way that she appears to um, hate him. And that's that seems to be the way that this um, relationship is broken up. But if I was him, mm. just to... S because you know what, the press will go along a, a, a road for a little while, mm -hmm. and then for no apparent reason, they'll, they'll turn, turn around and go in completely the opposite direction. So they're hating Heather right now. Mm -hmm. But as I said yesterday, uh, all the columnists are, are, are baiting Heather. Mm -hmm. But after they've uh, written that same column for a while about what an awful person they're saying that she is, mm -hmm. they're saying, well, I can't write that same column again because that's just repeating myself over and over, and the editor will um, be shouting at me down the phone. So I'll have to come up with something else. Oh, I know. I'll say what an awful person Paul McCartney is. And then, and then this wave will build up and suddenly the whole of the press is attacking him. Definitely. And you know the other thing I, I don't like at all? I can't, you know, it's a personal opinion. I can't stand Stella McCartney. I don't <laughs> like the woman. I never have. <laughs> um, I don't know about the other three children. Why? I, don't, I just don't like her. I think she's, she, I, I would call her a vindictive stepdaughter. I really would. I, I would like to know how much of her influence caused the marriage to break up in the first place. Can you believe that as a country that we're so interested in this, I by know. the way? I mean, <laughs> it's really. Stupid. It's really pathetic. There's much more important things. But I, I just had to phone Nick to say, because everybody, oh, Paul McCartney's, oh, he's fantastic, oh, he's been badly treated, oh, he's this, oh, he's that. Oh, please, pass yeah. me a sick bag. Exactly. Pay the woman off, get it over with, get on with your life. But you know what? This this um, minute eye of other people's relationships, it's yeah. uh, it's basically... Because we don't have the uh, the ability to natter over the fence um, mm -hmm. in the backyard anymore, because no one's got a backyard anymore, because Speak everybody yourself. lives in Speak flats. Speak talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not true at all. It, I just think it's because it's in the papers, isn't yeah. it, and it's someone famous. Well, it's a modern equivalent of um, gossiping to your neighbours. So nobody speaks to their neighbours anymore, and so we have to um, re read it in the paper and do it mentally, or on the phone to a show like this. That's Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Morel. Take care. Cheers, my dear. Ta-ra. Bye. Hey, you know, the Mafia have rules. Have you been, um, um, I hope you've been catching up with the uh, Sopranos. It's on every day now, I think five days a week on More 4 or More, more, you know, one of those extra four things. Right from the very beginning, they're showing them uh, once a day. It's not too late to get in there now. Um, but um, come to find out that the actual Mafia have um, a rule book. Members of the Italian Mafia are bound by ten commandments, which include... <laughs> punctuality. Punctuality! Can you imagine that? That somebody actually wrote that down to, for... Very um, important. The mafia. Well, it is. In anything. Well, I suppose so, but for the Mafia? That, that'd be the top of my kind of... If I was head mafioso. I mean, if you were uh, mi having a meeting with a mafios... A mafiosi... Mm. Mafios... The a, mafia. a mafia person... Yeah. Would you insist that they arrive on time? Oh, you'd give them a bit of leeway, I think. Uh, on time. Really? Mm. You'd, you'd lay down good. the law. Right. Um, others include um, avoiding bars. I thought that that's what they did. Well, it's certainly what they do on TV. They just hang out in the strip club all the time. I don't think they drink, do they? Don't they? No. They eat. They Maybe they, eat. they can't drink for eating. But they need to be very focused. I thought you were going to say fat. And they fat. all seem to be very, very fat. I wonder in real life if they are that fat. I suppose it is a reflection of uh, re reality. Apparently the only note that the actual Mafia gave Tony Soprano 
in the uh, in the run of uh, the Sopranos, Tony Soprano, the main uh, uh, character. The only thing that the, the the word came from the actual mob to tell him not to do something, right? Because it wasn't reflecting well on the mafia. Right. And you'd think you'd pay attention to a note like that. You would actually act on it. I would. You wouldn't just drop it in the bin oh. and say, oh, they're, you know, screw them. Was not to wear shorts. Good, good point, too. Because he, uh, in, in the very beginning, he was uh, um, having a barbecue in his back garden with all of his uh, suspicious mates, and he was wearing shorts because it was in the summertime and uh, it was uh, hot out. And they took great exception to this. Mafia men good. don't wear shorts. Good rule. They sound all right, the Mafia, so far. <laughs> Actually, you're right, they do. Um, nice people to do business with, probably. Um, they must not look at each other's wives. It just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, a list of rules was found among papers seized, seized after Monday's arrest of Salvatore Lo Piccolo. And if you're in Italy and you've got a middle name that's in inverted commas, you're in the Mafia. I mean, that should be a sign to the police. I mean, if your middle name is The Knife, then you're guilty. Mm. Uh, a type sheet of paper bearing the title Rights and Duties was among documents Low Piccolo apparently kept in a, a leather briefcase. According to Mafia experts, the list suggests bosses of Cosa Nostra, the Sicilian Mafia, wanted to rein in the flamboyant behaviour of the younger mobsters who have joined the organisation uh, in uh, recent years. Eee, it were grand when I were a lad. People would take uh, a clip around the ear with um, a 45 and just accept it as, uh, you know, part of uh, everyday punishment. These days, the lip you get from the young mafiosi. Organised crime has a turnover of, guess how much, in Italy alone? That's right, £62 billion. Pounds. Wow. Isn't that staggering? Not million, billion. It's 7% um, of Italy's gross domestic product and is apparently their biggest industry. Not clothing, not cars, not energy, food, nothing is bigger in Italy than the Mafia. That's quite staggering, really, isn't it? Here are the mobster guidelines. No one can present himself directly to another of our friends. There must be a third person. I suppose that's... You wouldn't want to be, uh... doing business with somebody that you don't know. Hey, Who are you, they'd say. So you get introduced by a third uh, person. So there's like always with, a middleman. Yeah, you're like you're with a, um... chaperone. It's really like, um, living in the thirties. Mm. Never look at the wives of friends. Uh, never be seen with police. Very important. Uh, keep out of pubs and clubs. I can't... I can't really get my head around that. You'd have thought the Mafia would have been all over pubs and clubs. Because? I don't really know, because they're places where vice is found. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't want to associate with that. Um, always be available for duty. This is beginning to sound like the Scouts rule book. Uh, respect all appointments. When asked for information, the answer must be the truth. Money cannot be appropriated if it belongs to others or other families. Now, surely they don't mean others. Not, you can only appropriate money if it's just lying around in the street. They mean other members of the Mafia. Yeah. Don't steal from your own. Don't go on your own doorstep. And um, people who can't be part of Cosa Nostra... Oh, this is a list of people who can't be a part of the Cosa Nostra. Right. Anyone with a close relative in the police. Anyone with a two-timing relative, like a dirty rat. And um, anyone who doesn't hold moral values. What? Cannot be part of the Mafia if you, ho if you do not hold moral values. Mm. That's... <laughs> that seems... That seems like a, com a like a joke list in order to throw off the police, to put them off the scent of the actual list, which is full of, you must hang out in pubs and clubs, but only hang out with, um... But that's know, why it's called organised crime, because they turn up on time and <laughs> they arrive in business suits and it all looks above board, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's incredible but that they're not actually German. They're so efficient, it's amazing. Well, th 66 billion pounds, that does suggest some sort of, um... The serious organisation, doesn't it? That's incredible. Race, yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, 
It goes on, I promise to do my best, to be courteous and a friend to animals, and to smile and whistle under all circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to whistle, don't you? You just put your lips together and blow. <laughs> it's 8.45. Who's travel now with Alan Joyce? And if you're heading on to the M3, there's... Yeah. Here's Hackney. Hello, uh, Tox. Hello, Nick. Tox. How you doing? I'm all right. Yeah. I just called him to say, you know, I'm a bit hacked off with this whole Heather, whatever she calls herself, and Paul, who, what's his name, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's got more money than you know what, and she apparently is not too, doing too badly herself. So this public squabble, you know, where's their dignity? Do you know what I mean? There's no dignity in it at all. Yeah, it wouldn't you know? be a public squabble if it weren't for the press following them around all the time. Yeah, but the thing is, Someone like Paul McCartney, he's been in the public line like for years, you know, for as long as I, longer than I was born. And, you know, Heather, whatever she calls herself, she started off pretty okay, obviously, with, you know, what happened to her and all that. And all of a sudden, it's just degenerated into this unnecessary mess. What happened to silence is the best answer for a fool. Yes, but you, know you, can't, you can't blame them. It's the press that's following them around all the time. They're the ones that keep writing about it. The reason that we're sick of it is because the press keep writing about it all the time. And if I were Heather McCartney, I would want the option to get my side of the story out, because if you were sitting there having a bucket load of poison poured over you by the British press on a daily basis, mm -hmm. without, the, without ever having the opportunity to put uh, your word uh, in there, without them uh, twisting it around to make you look even worse, then you would want the opportunity to um, say your piece. Yeah, but the thing is, is, she's got the option of going to court, taking them to court, for slander or libel, whatever it is, but she's not taking that option. So only the very so rich, just... only the really rich can take on the British press for slander and libel. That's a, that's a really rich man's game. The rest of us just have to sit there and take it. I don't know Plus, it's just, going to, it's just going to uh, get worse. You take, it's, uh, they're, uh, they're very much like bullies. It, they'll keep hitting you in the face, just as a bully would, but if you raise a finger of complaint, there's, they'll stagger back stunned that you could even have the nerve to complain about the tr treatment that they're meeting out to you. So, yeah, I understand why she would want to put her side of the story, and I also... I understand um, that as well, but, you know, at the same time, I do feel that, you know, there's putting your side of the story across, and there's, like, trying to have a go, and then expecting nothing to happen. You know something's going to happen. It's just like, you know... A flyweight trying to take on someone like Mike Tyson. He's going to knock you. He's going to knock you senseless. Do you know what I mean? And that's what's happening in this situation. It would have been better if she just like kept stum and waited for this whole thing to blow away, and that would have been the end of that. Right. You understand? I, that's that's what I feel anyway. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot, Tox. No worries. Cheers. Um, but yeah, I suppose I don't really want to talk about Heather and uh, Paul uh, all night long, or indeed ever for the rest of my life. But it does seem that. If I was in that situation, I would want to go on TV and actually say my bit that would uh, that would be live and unedited by other people to put across my side of the story. It's just that perhaps she should have taken media training or something like that, or a breath just to calm down a bit before she, uh, you know, went ahead and, and did it. Because the pictures that they always take of her on television are of her looking like a crazy person because she's got uh, the mad staring eyes. And the mouth is open in a shout, and she just she didn't do herself any favours at all. But it's good to lose it like that sometimes. I mean, that's what we all look like when we lose it. Yeah. Except, you know, most of us are not filmed. Exactly. And, yeah. And so what? She lost it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Well, she must be furious. I mean, mm. of, uh, uh, of, of everything that's happening to her right now, as you would be if the press was camped on your doorstep, mm. desperate to take anything that they could find on you and, uh, and make you look even worse than they've already painted you. A, a, a witch and a harlot and an evil woman yeah. and a... I mean, just the name that they've given her, Mucker, they must have been uh, hugging themselves with the glee uh, over that because the, the tabloid press love uh, giving someone a name that ends in A. It used to be an Australian thing. And then once they started with Gaza, they thought, oh, blimey, we've really got something here. And now, now everyone's name ends in A. I would be Nicker, you'd be Heza. <laughs> Victoria. I don't really know what we can do with that. Vicar. Vicar, yeah. <laughs> Lovely tea, Vicar, by the way. Thanks for that. Here is um, a person called Mark. Hi, mate. Of No Fixed Abode. Yes, Mark. 
How are you? I'm all right, thanks. Wonderful. It's, Top's kind of stole some of my thunder there, but um, in, in the words of um, the great Mrs. Metcalf, what actually attracted um, this woman to the millionaire? Well, you could switch that around. What attracted uh, the uh, the ancient and wrinkly uh, old scrope Paul McCartney to a uh, <laughs> young and uh, buxom, a lovely like uh, Heather? You know, they like made for each other, really, aren't they? Well, it couldn't have been her money, could it? Well, no, exactly. It couldn't. Have, but has it ever occurred to you that um, her youthful I mean, loveliness? I bet. I mean, he was what sixty, and she was thirty. Who could have predicted yeah. that that wouldn't work? Absolutely. I mean, really. I mean, being, being not the best-looking uh, thing in the world, you know, six foot two with big nose and big ears, that's me, not him. Um, you know, I'm sure if I had eight, 800 million pounds, I would have my pick of some of the most lovely women yes, in the world. Yes, you'd be making out like a bandit. Um, and also, if I was getting involved with somebody who's worth 800 million pounds, um, I probably would know that in the future, at some point, if things went wrong perhaps the press might want to jump on my head a little bit. Well, no, I don't think they're the two follow at all. Well, I, well, well, look I mean, at any instance, other high-profile divorce. Well, OK, well, look, look at a high-profile marriage. I mean, um, uh, Rupert Murdoch married a woman who was half his age. Well, <laughs> when was the last time you read about that in the press? Never. Because possibly there might have been some kind of gagging clause there. We don't know. Uh, not a gagging clause on the press. It's just that Rupert Murdoch owns the press. Some people get <laughs> good point. Yeah. Some people get singled out for uh, a monstering, and other people don't. And there's often no rhyme or reason to it. It's it's like sharks in the sea. They'll just scent that there's a weak one there, mm. and then they'll attack. Absolutely. But uh, going back to very very briefly, going back to the um, the GM TV thing. I, I was actually walking past the TV when I saw this kind of panic. Uh, woman on TV, and yeah. I sat and I listened to it, um, and I really think she did herself a bit of a service. I know you disagree, but she did a bit of a service because I think that was somebody at the end of their tether. Um, and I was a victim of the press. I was like, "Wow, Paul McCartney, you're a, you're a really nasty person. You're being really <laughs> horrible here." Yeah. And um, you know, um, and then I thought, "Well, hold on, Heather, you're a bit of a gold digger." And then I saw this, and it was somebody, you know, make up off. Um, you know, no holds barred. Somebody just going, please, for heaven's sake, leave me alone. This is what they've done to me. These are the things. This is my chance to have a say. And I kind of thought, you poor thing. Yeah, fair but enough. Maybe, exactly I, maybe right. I'm a victim to, you know, tab what I call GMTV is tabloid TV. But maybe, you know, I'm, I'm a victim of uh, tabloid TV. But, um, you know, she's in the public eye, mate. And... She's married a very high-profile high, high profile figure, you know, somebody who's much loved in this country for some reason. I, I don't particularly like the music, but um, she, I think she should have known that at some point, if it goes wrong, for whatever reason, you know, there could be some backlash. Well, uh, no, I, I disagree with that, and, and I also uh, don't think that anybody thinks that when they go into a relationship with somebody. You fall in love with somebody for whatever reason, you don't think, well, what's it going to be like when, it break, when we break up? Because you don't think you're going to break up, in much the same way that... that that uh, giving uh, criminals a long prison sentence isn't going to stop them killing people, because when you're doing it, you don't think, mm. oh, well, what will happen when I get caught? Because you're not expecting to get caught. Good anyway, Mark, I've got to go, because I'm past the break. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Take care. This is LBC. LBC. LBC 97.3. 0845 6060 Nick Abbott. There is a thousand pounds in cash, and uh, tomorrow someone is going to win a week for two at the exclusive uh, Sunset Grande Resort, Ojo Rios, in Jamaica, with Paul Ross in the afternoon from four o'clock. Uh, if you can guess the Jamaican gem that Levi Roots and Jimmy Adams are describing, uh, then you will win a thousand pounds in cash. Or tomorrow, a trip to Jamaica, so much more than just a beach resort. You can find out more about Jamaica by downloading the podcast at lbc.co.uk and win a luxury tip for two to Jamaica. Once you go, you know, you know. Harpenden. Hello, David. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, I wanted to say that I do not think that Sir Ian Blair should resign. Um, I think the problem um, with all the, uh, the public in the UK is not really used to suicide bombing. And God forbid, if there is another two or three, then they'll look at it as collateral damage. I, I know it's sad to say that because, after all, uh, this, the, Mr. De Menez uh, has a family and everything. But imagine if it was the other way around, 
and 50 people would have been killed, uh, what would have happened then? So I, I think that he should not resign. Right. Shoot That's first and uh, think later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because it's, it's a war. Everything is fair in, in, in love and war, like they say, but this right. is a different war. This is a war against terrorism. Right, well, everything is fair in love and war. That's not what the court in Strasbourg would say. But uh, anyway, thanks a lot, David. Cheers, mate. Uh, um, oh, wait, there was something else. <laughs> Oops, we've run out of time. I'd like to create a modern non-mafia code of conduct. Ten things that you should rule your life by. And I'll start you off. Be polite! Be polite. So, if you can, uh, by the uh, end of this program, I want to come up with ten things that we should rule our life by in the modern day uh, if you're not a member of the Mafia. Because they have rules, apparently we don't. On night three, Nick Abbott. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? Can you believe that the police have shown up to Amy Winehouse's house? What a surprise, eh? <laughs> What a maelstrom it must be to uh, live uh, around uh, Amy's place. And, uh, by the way, O.J. Simpson might be uh, spending the rest of his life in jail because uh, he's going to be uh, sent to a trial in America because of the... Paraf the, um... Not paraphernalia, the, um... Sporting... What's the word that rhymes with paraphernalia that's, um... I guess paraphernalia is... Oh, no, my brain stopped. Ah... Uh... So, so I suppose again. paraphernalia is worse. Stuff. Yeah, his, uh, his sporting stuff. You're exactly right. Stuff does rhyme with paraphernalia. <laughs> Correct. Because, what, say the whole thing again. I'm gobsmacked. You know, O.J. Simpson do, went to... Yeah, it. yeah. He went to um, try and get back some uh, sporting paraphernalia that was his, apparently. Right. You know, um, uh, awards that he'd won right. and, you know bloodied gloves and things like that. Stuff that was dear to his heart and he wanted but wanted back. Such sweet memories. And um, he went to, I think it was a casino in Vegas? Maybe I'm getting this wrong, but anyway, he went to somebody's place with some other, um, ne'er-do-wells, very nice gentleman, one of the two, and they were, um, armed, apparently, it is suggested. And, um, so that amounts to armed robbery. And so we're about to get the O.J. Simpson trial again. Now, I know that we're not that uh, uh, as interested in this country as uh, America is, but believe me, America will stop for the O.J. Simpson trial Mark II, because this time they really want to get him. He was virtually let off, much to everyone's amazement, by, I think it was an all-black jury, wasn't it? And the selection process for the jury just went on almost as long as time has uh, been ticking because they wanted to make sure, absolutely, that um, whoever they got on the jury was, <laughs> was going to let him off. And that's the, uh, and that's what they got. And white America was stunned. Black America was um, uh, having a celebration about it, really. It, it, was, it, it became not the trial of O.J. Simpson, but uh, a race thing. Mm. And so that now we're going to have that all over again. And so, um, oh, I don't know. He seems like a very nice man to me. Lovely. <laughs> Memorabilia, is it? Memorabilia! <laughs> Paraphernalia, memorability, you can see how I get confused, yeah. So we're about to have that again, and we're hoping for the right result this time. Here's uh, Primrose Hill. Hello, Peter. Oh, hi there. Peter. Nick, hello. Um, You're very close to Amy Winehouse's place. Oh, good. Yes, I am. <laughs> and lots of other people as well. Um, Ian Blair. Oh, right. Now, I think that, of course, he couldn't be responsible for everything that went on. Um, no one could. But where I think he falls down, is that for 24 hours after the incident, he was, he was giving statements to the press, the media, um, that were completely misleading. And he was in, a, in an open plan office where everything was going on, you think that he might have had a little chat with some of the people around him? Yeah. Well, it I just made him look like a... a it made him look like a dope. I'll tell you what, another thing that makes him look like a dope is he doesn't put his cap on straight. It's all ski-whiff. And he just... Yeah, he and, looks, like, looks uh, like a noddy from some, some <laughs> silly... TV yes. Program. It does. He uh, looks like a, a member of, um, a Camberwick Green. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's I think a, the problem is that, about the, that the people in his office weren't talking to him. And either they were too scared to, 
um, or, or they didn't have confidence in him. Right. Well, you know, the manager of any organisation can't be held totally responsible, not really can't be held completely responsible for the actions of everybody that's under, under him, um, unless no, something really bad happens, and then they've got to blame, someone's got to fall, and then it's, uh, you know, the buck stops with, well, etc. But the question is, why didn't they talk to him? Why didn't right, they? Well, I've got no idea, mate. No, no one will have any idea from now until the end of time. But he didn't have, they didn't have confidence in him, is what it's, what it's down to, well, actually. Well, maybe. Maybe they just were, uh, frightened, because they knew they'd made a giant mistake and they didn't want to tell the big boss. Yeah, exactly. But we'll and probably... Want they all... don't have confidence in right. him. <laughs> we'll probably never find out. Thanks a lot, Peter. All right, mate. Um, it's not a subject I really want to get uh, into, because where can you possibly go with that subject? It's all bad. But it does strike me that somebody should, um... Uh, I'm going to send him a mirror in the post, because when he came out from his uh, grilling... Well, it wasn't really a grilling, it was more of a stroke in the county hall. Is it county hall they're calling that stack of falling plates? Yeah. It's county hall, right? Um, he came out to uh, address the press and he hadn't got his cap on straight. And you couldn't think, you couldn't pay attention to anything he was saying because you, you, your mind kept uh, s screaming at you, this dope's not got his cap on straight. He just looked like a fool. You'd think that he would have an assistant who would, uh, you know, um, adjust his cap for him. They're all frightened of him. They're all frightened of him. That's what fella says. Well, maybe they don't have confidence in his uh, cap-wearing abilities. Maybe that's just the uh, shape of his head. I don't know, but seriously, if, if you're going to get um, all dolled up in your uh, fancy uh, uniform with your uh, uh, braids and your stripes and all, all that folder all, you've got to get your cap on straight, otherwise the whole thing just falls down. So what are your ten rules for modern living? Be polite. Be polite! And put your cap on straight. No, I'm, uh, I'm determined to do this, and um, I'll do it. Here's another call about Ian Blair. Can we have a few fewer calls about Ian Blair? I don't want them. It's not a happy story. You know, I mean, there's pl pl plenty of opportunities to do unhappy uh, phone-ins, but um, it's not really something I do, because I just get depressed. I don't come in uh, to work to get depressed. I come in for, you know, a little light relief, to re relieve the, uh, the boredom and the misery of my ordinary everyday life. It's the only, uh, it's the only fun I have. Isn't that pathetic? It's, it's not entirely true, but I'll just stick with it in the hope that people will stop calling me about Ian Blair. I don't want any more calls about Ian Blair, please. That's a direct, um, plea to you, Victoria. Or Vicar. Oh, yeah. But, but Vicar doesn't know what, that, that, that's not right by definition. So it has, has you, you, you usually put a Z on the end of it, so it, Visa. Visa. I was just going to call you Nicker, but that, that's... N that's that doesn't really... Either. No, Nicker, because, yes. So, it, I would be Nizza, your Heza, <laughs> your Fizza. <laughs> if we ever get, um, you know, monsters by the tabloid press, that will be uh, that, that our names. Get used to it. But anyway, it's um, 0845 6060973. I want ten modern commandments, not of a religious nature, but uh, of a nature that would reflect the, um, the Mafia's um, uh, guidelines. Uh, which were, uh, to briefly recap, never look at the wives of friends, never be seen with the police, keep out of pubs and clubs, always be available for duty, treat wives with respect, respect all appointments, uh, be truthful, um, don't nick from your own, and don't um, associate with people who don't hold moral values. Um, and you must always be chaperoned. That, so those are, those are their ten guidelines. What are the ten guidelines for modern living? Be polite. I think that's the most important one. Mm. That could solve so many problems that um, lead to um, uh, mental anguish, heartache, injury, death. Wars. Yeah, wars. Exactly right. Yeah, be polite. If only uh, the man who shot Archduke Ferdinand had been more polite, then we wouldn't have had that mess. And people wouldn't have got muddy, and we wouldn't be wearing poppies right now. You see? Politeness. Mm. Um, look at that board. Not remotely interested in modern life. <laughs> do, you, do you want to know one of mine, then? Uh, I'll, I'll, this is something I'm unaccustomed to doing, but I'll say the number again, because I think that this is an interesting topic. Yeah. Commandments for modern life. Number one, I'll start you off, be polite. And we'll compile a list, and by the end of the programme, we'll pick our favourite that would make um, uh, modern life more palatable, more bearable. Would make the Mafia a little bit jealous that we have got a better yeah. list. Yeah, we, we, we'll construct a better list than the Mafia. I think theirs is pretty good. 
It is. They've missed one thing out, though. Really? Whenever you go to a restaurant... Yeah. ...and you sit down for a meal, you should be brought water. Yes. You shouldn't be... You shouldn't have to do the, um, I'd like a glass of water, oh, still or sparkling. Because I've now um, got past the embarrassment of saying tap water, because I always used to, and then I just kind of gave up because I felt cheap. But now, of course, I can ask for tap water under the guise of saving the planet. <laughs> and I feel virtuous and cheap. They don't like it, but, um, yeah, absolutely right. If you go to a restaurant in America... Um, or I'd anywhere in Europe... Really? Mm -hmm. They will give you a glass of water without you having to ask for it. With ice in it. Uh, in this country, not so much. Still or sparkling. Five pound a bottle. <laughs> Ludicrous. Um, I, anyway, my first is be polite. We'll compile a list of... We'll, we'll make a big list, and then we'll narrow them down to ten, and we'll pick one that would improve our lives beyond measure. OK, so what's yours? Oh, that's it. You drop more. Uh, I've got another one. Well, it seemed... It seemed... Um, I don't wish to be offensive when I say this, but it seemed a little superficial. I thought it was going to be much oh. more deeper than that. But OK, I'll write that down. Yeah. It might not make the ten. I can't guarantee it. There are no guarantees on okay. this programme. I've got another one. Water. Free water. Well, how See? would you put that in few words? You are offered... Uh, you are offered water when you walk into a restaurant, when you sit down to your table. Right, that's There's about, a jug of water. That's about 50 words. How ice. Uh, right, OK. Um, <laughs> how do you say that in three? <laughs> um, uh, free... Free tap water. Free tap water. Free water on tap. Yeah. Literally. OK. So that's two. I'm not certain that that's going to um, get no. in the top ten. Would you be very offended if it didn't? Well, if that's the best we get, then I suppose so. Two. Yeah, I know. We'll just have to stick with what we get. You're absolutely right. Nine fifteen. <laughs> Travel now with Alan Joyce. I think the North Circular Road now has problems. Right. First in, be polite. Then free tap water on the restaurant table without having to ask for it. Damn it! That's as a few words as we can actually put that into. Uh, here is uh, Streatham. Hey, Jimmy. Uh, hello there, Jimmy. I got a very important rule for life. Yeah. Uh, I find it very uh, disconcerting when people uh, drop litter in the street. I think it's an important rule for life to say, uh, always stand up to litter bugs. Always stand up to litter bugs. Yeah, don't don't stand for it. Just uh, you, you look them in the eye and you tell them you pick that up and put it in a bin like a responsible citizen. Or else, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to, to bin you. it for you and yeah. that's going to upset me. Okay, all right. We wouldn't want to upset you. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy! <laughs> He blows my mind. Here is, um, West Wickham. Christopher. Hello, Nick. Christopher. I, I have to say I agree with that last caller about the litter. That's 100% right. All right. Um, no uh, littering. Yeah. Not loitering. No littering. Littering. Absolutely no littering. Yeah. It really messes the place up. Anyway. Uh, it, it drives me mad. P you see people, um, sitting in, uh, in stationary traffic, and they're uh, eating whatever it is that they're stuffing in their face, and yeah. when they're finished with it, it's as though, how, how anybody can do this, I, I just don't understand the, the mentality of people who think, oh, I'm finished with this, I'll just put it out the window. <laughs> well, yeah. What kind of a person is that? I just don't get it. A muppet. Yes. I mean, yeah. th these people aren't helping. I mean, there should be, uh, I made this analogy before, society is like a giant boat we are most of us all pulling in for the, in the same direction we're all rowing away light mad for a nirvana which is on the horizon some people a small percentage but they uh, th but they are uh, large enough to sink the lot of us are digging holes they're not they're not rowing but they're actually digging holes in the hole in that circumstance what would you do with these people would you ask them politely if they wouldn't mind not killing us all or would you throw them overboard I think we need to start throwing people overboard a bit more. Does that sound uh, ex an extreme right-wing thing to say? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, sort of. Um, anyway, my rule is, uh, don't get mad, get even. Don't get mad, get even. Yeah. I'm not sure that's a very happy rule. No. Could you explain that further? Well, it's like I was in my business studies class today, and um, there's this guy with this big head but he was, he was taking the mickey out of me because I was fat. And he was saying, when, when you have your driving lesson, uh, how does the car move along because you're so fat? So I said, well, 
when you get in the car, do you have to put like an extra big headrest on your in your car? And everybody laughed. And this was in a what? A business study lesson. <laughs> 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 and what was the average age? About five. What in my business study class? Yes. No. This is shocking behaviour. Seventeen. <laughs> Seventeen. Right. Seventeen. Eighteen. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fair enough, I suppose. Still children. Um, mentally, yeah. Well, he is. Well, I'm 48. I'm still a child mentally. Yeah. It takes forever to grow up. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> right. Uh, but if you are um, slightly overweight, then the, the good news is, uh, <laughs> today, which is completely yeah. the opposite of the news that we heard last week, you will live longer than people who are thinner than you, apparently. Really? Yeah. Is did you not read about when, this? If that's when all the food runs out, I'll still be living off myself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Being a little overweight actually protects people against dying prematurely from a range of diseases researchers have discovered. A study of adult deaths in America has found that the overweight are at no more risk of dying from cardiovascular disease or cancer, and they say that being about a stone too heavy appears to lower significantly the risk of dying prematurely. What about that? No crumbs, that sounds good. People that are merely overweight but not obese may be better able to recover from adverse conditions such as infections and are more likely to survive certain diseases. So go ahead and tuck in, mate. I hope, I hope Big Ed's listening to this. <laughs> OK. Well, as long as uh, we are making the uh, conversation more mature, that's um, good input. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Christopher. Thank you. All right. Don't get mad, get even. I'm not sure that we can actually... I'll, pu I'll put that down in pencil. So... That seems like something that wouldn't be... The Mafia, maybe, but not us. Hi, Louise. Hi, Nick. How, How are, are you? you? I'm all right. I'm good. <laughs> um, one of the rules, and I think it's an important one, is that you should have a sense of humour, always. Because if everybody had a sense of humour about themselves, you, you wouldn't be able to insult people. So the press wouldn't be going after Heather. There wouldn't be all these fights in the streets because no one would ever get insulted. They'd just be laughing. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose so. But yeah. when, where, where does that have a sense of humour? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that Heather, McCart Heather Mills has a sense yeah. of humour, but you just get pushed too far. You mean always take anything that happens to you with a cheery uh, smile, like a scout, always be uh, whistling and singing? Yeah. Yeah, it would make the world a much better place. Though. Well, I suppose it would. Yeah, and because uh, I, uh, I, it takes a lot for things to get to me, um, so I, I just mainly laugh off things. Right. And you know, what? I, I, I don't feel as stressed out as most people. Well, that's a very good point. I mean, there's there's two <laughs> ways to deal with um, uh, things that are uh, you know, like rocks in your a road of life you can either start freaking out about it and tear your hair out and start shouting and screaming and uh, your blood pressure will go up or mm. uh, with the the very same outcome you can just oh. think um oh well you know and just have a <laughs> that's what i do most of the time oh well yeah. have a bit of a laugh <laughs> 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 and um and th and the outcome will be the same in either way you'll just go around whatever it is that's in your way or uh, over it or uh, under it or, pi or pick a new route but uh, d driving yourself crazy about it you're you only uh, ruining your own health yeah you can't stop rubbish from happening in your life can you yeah. it happens bleep so. happens yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah and about the other way sort of being good for you do they actually know what's good for you and what's not good for you? I think they just guess. <laughs> it seems to me that these people who are uh, researching this sort of stuff, mm. they're interested primarily in maintaining their research budget. And yeah. so if they can come up with something that nobody has said before, then people will yeah. think, oh, well, maybe you're onto something there. We'll give you more money. Uh, which is why everybody's disagreeing with each other all the time, and if you if you uh, obeyed all of the commandments that they've uh, given you about what you can and cannot... Because the other thing they've said today is that sunbathing oh. slows the ageing process. <laughs> oh, <laughs> can you believe that? No! Because I thought it was the very opposite. They've been telling us for uh, ever and a day that sunbathing increases the ageing process. Now yeah, you'll, get, you'll get skin cancer, but at least you'll be young. <laughs> but I thought that the, the sun was supposed to uh, make your skin uh, lose its collagen and get wrinkly and, and so on, which is why people in um, Spain and so on uh, look great up until they're about 
25, and then they look <laughs> 50 straight away. It's because of the sun. Yeah, in moderation, maybe it does, but not if you're frying yourself on a sunbed every week. Scientists have found that people who avoid the sun are subject to uh, genetic damage associated with ageing and age-related illnesses. So stay out of the sun and look older. Isn't that something to do with the vitamins? Uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, right. Yeah, I read that. Studies well, show that people should spend more time in the sun and eat more foods uh, rich in vitamin D, such as fish, which we've previously been told to uh, uh, limit, yeah, yourself, limit yourself to only uh, two a week, eggs, mm -hmm. which we've been told that you can't eat because of the cholesterol, yeah. Uh, milk, see eggs above, and uh, breakfast cereals, which bloat you. Yeah, and have lots of sugar in them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you should just do what you want to do, really. Yes, and... you're right. Everything in moderation, just do what uh, do what uh, makes you feel good. If it feels good, do then it. Then it probably is. You yeah. should listen, like you always say, you should listen, listen to your to body. Listen to your yeah, body, yeah. Definitely. It'll tell you. That's right. Yeah, definitely. Okay, thanks, Louise. Thanks, Nick. Take Cheers, care. Cheers, All right, so far... Uh, not a bad list. We're, uh, we're going to distill from uh, what we get uh, to ten, and then by um, a scientific uh, method we will uh, choose uh, the very best one. Croydon, uh, Jason. Oh yeah, hello there. Jason. Uh, how can you listen to your body, uh, the lady was mentioning? What, I, what she means is that uh, if you tune your body up to the point where it's uh, relatively healthy, then it will tell you what it wants. It will, you will crave an orange when you're lacking vitamin C or uh, cheese when you need good calcium. It will tell you what you want. And it will say, and it will, because I think it's true that the fitter you get, the less your body wants crisps and chocolate and all that stuff. You just don't want it because you've tuned your body up. In much the same way as a Ferrari wouldn't run very well on alcohol, but you could start a tractor with it. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's absolutely correct. Uh, I just had a couple of queries um, uh, listening into your... Um, were you talking about the uh, code of silence or some sort of commandments earlier? Uh, what, the mafia? Yeah, uh, yes. Right. Um, <clears throat> uh, it made me kind of wonder... Oh, oh, about... oh, we got to go. I'm sorry, I'll come back to you. London's... LBC 97.3 0845 6060 Nick Abbott. Everything is going extremely well. You bet it is. We have a how low auction going at the moment, by the way. Uh, are you still there, Jason? I uh, certainly am. Good man. I'll come to you in just a second. All right. No problem. Uh, in our how low reverse auction competition running all week, we have LBC's biggest ever plasma TV giveaway. It is huge. 50 inches. And a state of the art surround sound system to stick around it in it. It's the biggest plasma screen we've ever given away, uh, combined with the surround sound system. This will uh, blow you away and uh, probably uh, really upset your neighbours. It has fast motion-enhancing technologies. That sounds fantastic. It's HD-ready with a built-in free view, so you don't need another box uh, underneath it. It's black, it's glossy, it looks fantastic even when it's switched off. To bid, text LBC plus your bid in pence to 8821, remembering that it's a how-low auction, so in other words, the lowest... A unique bid in pence wins. If nobody else bids what you do in pennies, then uh, you could win it. So, literally, you could get this for one pence. Um, treble eight two one, your bid in pence. For example, if it was forty five pence, you would text LBC forty five to treble eight two one. Bids cost one pound fifty plus your standard network rate. Lines close at six p.m. Friday, the ninth of November. Bidders must be over 16. See lbc.co.uk for full terms and conditions. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jason. Oh, yeah, hi. Jason. Sorry about that. Uh, no, not at all. It's all very good. Um, <clears throat> uh, without talking about religion, um, Ten Commandments, etc., and... Well, what are they all about? I mean, really, is it the backbone of life and how to go about living in morals, and or, or is it just some sort of a code? It's a guide. It's a it's a life guide. Yeah, a, a rule book, if you like. You mean the Ten Commandments, or what we're making here? No, uh, well, yeah, the Ten Commandments. The, the Ten Commandments is is. Uh, you know, is, is it just like an absolute life guide, or is it a philosophy? Yeah. It's um, well, it's a it's a guide for people who don't know how to <laughs> how to conduct themselves, I suppose. 
Okay. Um, and then the recent um, Tutankhamun five-year-old pharaoh, uh, you know, the, uh, they just displayed the um, mummified body of the young Torto. Yeah, they got his face out. Well, how on earth do they end up preserving that for so many thousands of years? Um, Within the heat and the burial, and uh, yeah. they didn't, um, no. Preservation techniques must have been very good in the ancient days. Well, I suppose so. They put a hook up your nose and pulled your brain out. Lovely. Could you get away with that in the NHS now? <laughs> well, they're thinking about it. There'll be uh, a, a waiting list. Because um, I was speaking to my friend last night about the whole um, Egyptian and the, the uh, you know, the mystical yeah. uh, thing. And just to do with the, the um, topography of the whole area and, and to do with the, um, the building of the... Um, burial chambers and stuff. I've been to Luxor, and it's just a fascinating place. But I have to say, it doesn't look 3,000 years old. Oh, you, you smell a rat. No, I'm just curious to why it looks too new. Right. And hieroglyphics, um, it's just a very, very uh, illusional area. I mean, have you ever thought about the reality of what might have gone on? Um, well, I've seen, uh, I've seen various documentaries of people that, um, you know, the, the, the kind of people who think that spacemen are among us, who thought, think that it's uh, either a, a much older uh, than uh, they're saying it is, or much um, uh, younger than they're saying it is, and uh, you know what, I don't really care, I'm not remotely interested in Tutankhamun, and I can't believe that anybody else is, too. You're going to go and see um, a dead guy's relics, and they're going to be queuing around the block, it's, it's uh, supposed to be the biggest... Um, um, uh, art blockbuster in history since since the uh, the mask came here last time in 1970 whatever it was and um i just i just don't care unless they're advertising with us of course in which case i should buy two tickets yeah i mean i i just thought that you know the discovery of those areas um howard carter i think it was to do with the guy who discovered certain bits and pieces in the 1920s i just thought that would have done tourism a great deal and I'm not saying I smell a rat, but I've been there and it doesn't look too ancient at all. Right, OK, well, we'll investigate that with both hands. Thanks a lot, Jason. Thanks. Here is, uh, Surbiton. Oscar. Hello, Nick. Oscar. Hi there. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. You all right? Yeah, super. Thanks for asking. Good. I was listening to your rules and regulations as to how to be a mafioso. Yeah. And it was... The thought that struck me, first of all, was maybe we've uh, misjudged the Mafia. I know, they seem like such nice people. Yeah, I mean, um, it's obvious, isn't it, that when you... If you get groups of people coming together to try and organise things, that there is another group of people who already kind of organise things on our behalf who would seek to kind of discredit any other groups coming along that are trying to organise things so that it, those who already had us by the short and curlies would not like to have any other groups getting themselves together and... Blimey, hands up through there who has any idea <laughs> what well, we've just right, heard. No, no, look, <laughs> You're being very vague, Oscar. No, I mean, the government, if you want to call it that, the organs of the state kind of control our lives now. Oh, uh, yes, the dark overlord. <laughs> yes. So the idea of people getting together in any kind of organisation that is separate from them would be threatening to them. So you would tend to think that they were good, they, were, they would try to demonise any such group and make out that they were do doing something sinister, when in fact perhaps all they were doing is operating kind of as a community organisation or something like that, trying to get together collectively for the well-being of their group and for those around them. So maybe groups like the Mafia, and you get the same sort of thing with the, the Freemasons, uh, perhaps we should reconsider whether the image that's being portrayed of these groups is being distorted in some way by people who are, in fact, already interfering and meddling in our lives in a way which is, in fact, sinister, but they try to twist everything around so that it looks like the opposite way around, so that the, the bad guys are really the good guys, and the good guys are really the bad guys, but the bad guys who currently have us want to make it look um, backwards way around. Absolutely. Yeah, so you're well, saying that the Mafia are like um, uh, a fatter, more male a Women's Institute. Well, isn't it a 
a good thing for individuals to come together as communities. Yeah, whatever happened to peace, love and understanding? Yeah, I mean, like, if, if people are coming together in groups like that... In a great they... big, a melting pot. Yeah. Big enough, big enough, big enough to well, take well, the that... world and all it's got. Well, the world would have been a good thing. It'd be stirring for a thousand years or more and make coffee-coloured people by the score. Hmm. I'm just making this stuff up. But, you know, your, your rules and regulations that perhaps should apply to all of us... Sort yeah, of have around. you got one? Well... I'm going to offer you one. Um, I think one that would spring to my mind is about loyalty. Yes, yeah, say it. So, something less, like... Less preamble, more saying. Your word is, must be your bond. How about that? Right. Uh, be truthful. Yes, yeah, if you want to do it like a be polite, be truthful, be honest, be loyal, something like that. Right, it's fewer words. If you say something... Which is what we're after here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a few a fewer words, Oscar. There was a TV show about a couple oh, of years more words. ago... Yes. ...which, tr which tried to uh, rewrite the Ten Commandments. I don't know if you saw that. It was a little while ago, but I do sort of remember it. And I remember what came number one. I don't know if you want me to tell you that, but... Um, I feel that you will anyway. Go ahead. Well, if you want me to... Please uh, do. Essentially, what it was was the, the do-as-you-would-be-done-by thing. Right. Treat, treat others as you would have them treat you, is, yeah. I think, the way they actually... Do as you would be done by, yeah. Yeah. OK. So that's well, um, number one. And all right, well, I'll put that down as well. OK. All right, that's a twofer. Thanks a lot, Oscar. All right. Cheers, okay. mate. Ta-da. Right. Um, I've got another couple in here as well. You haven't given us one year yet, uh, Vizza. Vizza? Vazza? What are we calling you? Vizza. Um... Helen is Hezza, I'm Lizza, <laughs> you're Vizza. I've got, um... What did he just say? <laughs> I've forgotten. I, I was hoping you <laughs> were making notes there. <laughs> there were so many words in there. Um, what did he say? Oh, I've gone, I'm drawing a blank now. How very upsetting for him. Something about organisations and... Uh, do as you, um, would be done by. Mm. Do as you... Do, yeah, as would be done... Bye. I have, so far, be polite, free tap water on the restaurant table without having to ask for it, damn it. No littering. Don't get mad, get even. I'm not sure about that one. I don't like the tone of that. I mean, in fact, I'm going to cross that one out. That's not in the spirit of this, is it? Um, have a sense of humour. Quite right, too. I've got one. Motorbikes should stick to their own side of the road. How about that? The amount of times I'm driving along, you know, driving along, minding my own affairs... <laughs> And, um, right in front of me, on the, on the, on my side of the road, is a motorbike. I mean, I know that it's attempting to skip the traffic, uh, if you're on, uh, just two wheels. But, but just driving in the middle of the lane on the other side of the road, I mean, how many times have you seen that? That's, um, I mean, no wonder they're dying all the time. Their road safety is just rubbish. Uh, be truthful, quite right too, and do as you would be done by. Uh, let's have another one. York. Uh, John. Oh, good evening, uh, Nick. Hey, John. Y you were saying, sir, that the Ten Commandments are a guide. Oh, God. That that's what you said, they're a guide or something. Yeah. No, I mean, well, if we're talking about the actual Ten Commandments... OK, well, let's not. Oh, well... <laughs> Have I stumped you? Yeah, sorry, because oh, I thought well, you were talking tremendous. about the actual Ten Commandments. Oh, OK, well, uh, we'll, we'll be having a, an in-depth religious discussion uh, oh. after the news at ten. <laughs> oh, right. There you go, Clive. Uh, but thanks anyway, John, all right. Uh, here is, um, I think we just dodged one there. Here's Noel Kensington. Hello, Nick. Noel. Uh, Nick, I was reading once about uh, Rockefeller the First, and he always said, and he lived by it, was, it's a bit like when someone's come up with, only do unto others what they would do unto you, but do it first. <laughs> right. <laughs> As that was his life rule. Yeah, he seems like a, such a nice man, yeah. OK, well, I've, I've got um, do as you would be done by, which is sort of the other way around. Yeah, yeah. But uh, more it's, or, or less the uh, same. Uh, didn't do him too badly. No, I suppose not. All right, thanks, Noel. Bye. Um, Dagenham. Oh, no. You're not going quickly enough, Vizza. Just pop them all up. We're running out of time. Here is uh, East Ham, Hassan. Hi, Nick. Yeah, Hi. I've, I've got one. Go on, which then. is the other thing that's good. Um, be charitable. Be charitable? Yeah. Um, in terms of giving your money and doing charitable deeds, like, you know, throughout the day, like, you know. 
Yeah, you help I mean? um, help people crossing yeah. the road and g give up your seat if uh, you know if somebody needs it more than you do and yeah, exactly. stuff like that. Not necessarily giving your money away, although I, I suppose it would help if you have a lot of it. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, just be. How about be nice? Yeah. Th that yeah, encompasses yeah. a lot. Yeah, that would be wicked. Right. Okay. Um, be charitable. I have another one. Could Go on. Be, then. Um, keep promises. Keep promises. Yeah. And nothing think just about it. Well, All right. Okay. Thanks, Hassan. Uh, thank you. Everyone's been very vague. No, no one's coming up with this apart from you and you and I, uh, Heza. You with the free tap water, which was very specific, and me with the motorbikes on the other side of the road. Everyone's being very vague. Like, be nice and um, keep promises, and it's all very, well, I suppose it's, it's, it's wishy-washy, but it's, it's not rapier-like, it's not precise, it's not nailing people down about, uh, you didn't do this, now you must, I don't know, what would the penalty be? The taser? Die? It's 9.45. Here's Travel Now with Alan Joyce. Thanks, Nick, and we're looking at delay. LBC 97.3. 0845-6060-973. Nick Abbott. Come on, we're running light! Uh, for no uh, good reason than um, I just uh, thought it up and thought I'd do it. We're doing uh, rules for modern living. And we're going to whittle them down to uh, a ten, which would serve everybody uh, well, I think, to um, run their life by. And then we'll have one, the most important one, right at the end of the programme. Isn't that exciting? Um... Here is uh, West Kensington. Hello, Jane. Hello, Nick. Jane. Uh, listen, is this a regular spot now, or are you just filling in again? Um, it's uh, regular until the uh, chaos of Christmas. Oh, OK, right. Well, it's great to hear you, darling. Oh, um, I've got to um, respect other people, because there's not a lot of respect around, is no, there, at the right. moment? Yeah, there's a lot of people say, uh, mo moan about it and uh, kill each other over it, mm. but actual respect? No, you're right. Respect others. Could you put that down? I'm writing it as we speak. I think it's very important. Respect others. Mm. Uh, is that the, uh, okay, that, it was just that one, right? Uh, yes. Oh, well, a lot, of, a lot of people have said, well, I was going to say rubbish, litter, you know, that really annoys yeah. me, that litter business. Me too. Oh, how about dogs, um, uh, oh, yes. dogs must not foul or yeah. yap in public. <laughs> yes, that's very important. Right. No dogs. Mm. I just put no dogs. <laughs> that covers everything, right? Yeah. I swear, there's a there's a, a passage that goes under a bridge near me, and the passage narrows to about two foot across, and the bridge over it means that it never sees rainwater. Every single time I go uh, down this passage, some dope with a dog has let it do right there. Mm. So it's unavoidable. It, 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 the, literally, the, the path narrows to two foot, and at the narrowest point, there's always a giant mound of dog uh, crap under a bridge where it will never get washed away. And uh, you, you come back the next day, and of course it's still there, except it's been smeared all over the place. And how, what kind of person would stand there idly by while their dog was uh, going on the narrowest point in a covered, on a covered pavement? I cannot understand that. I, I, I just can't. It's not, the, it's not the dog's fault. The dog doesn't understand. It's the owner's fault. So we should start, be, uh, to start culling dog owners. Would that be a good idea? Mm-hmm. Definitely. No dogs. Mm, I'm not terribly keen on dogs anyway, you know. But, uh, you know, I just... Um, They're just too stupid. Why can't I mean, they teach them that? to do it to, sort of in the curb and then take go along with a bag yeah you know, it's clean it's up with a, a plastic bag dogs are stupid so it's not their fault it's no. the owner's fault yeah yeah mm -hmm. be okay. responsible yeah okay bye bye nick thanks a lot jane bye -bye. here is uh, hayes pamela hello nick pamela i've got a very trivial commandment okay please no loud bangers fireworks after midnight all right no uh, well, just no noise. No noise from neighbours or anybody. Everyone must be quiet. Shut up. Well, no, I wouldn't go so far as to say that because there has to be some noise. No, I'll just but write down... Unnecessary noise. I'll write down shut up and that will cover <laughs> it. <laughs> everybody must shut up. Oh, you are a tinker. <laughs>
No, but I completely agree with you, yeah. It's, uh, noise from neighbours just drives me insane. I mean, I fortunately, I don't have much of it, but that, w that which I do have... I mean, what is worse, on a nice, t sunny afternoon, yeah. you've got the windows open, mm. and then there's that demented bumblebee of a lawnmower going. Right, lawnmowers and people in... Uh, and bonfires, and, and, and you put your washing out. And kids in swimming pools over the fence, because there's, there's something about a swimming pool and a child that just makes them scream. For hours, they're screaming. It uh, well, does my parents' head in. I don't know why, but I don't... I also do think that ponds should have wire covers over them so children can't fall in and drown. Right. I know, I'm... I go from the trivial, but I can't help yeah. it. Well, it's there's nothing, tri nothing trivial about that. All right, thanks a lot, Pamela. Night, night. Cheers, mate. Ta-ra. Here is Kingston. Hello, Lou. Hello. Hello, Lou. Hello. Lou. Hello. I'll try one more time. Can you ha hear me? Loud and clear, Lou. Hello. <laughs> yes, Lou. OK. No spitting allowed. On the top deck of a bus. Or just anywhere, it's or horrid. Anywhere. No spitting, yes. And um, all cyclists must stop at red lights, and they never do. It's very naughty. And, <laughs> especially now, I see this so many times, cyclists, the, the lights on your bike, those little flashing things, motorists can't see those. No, it, they're rubbish. What you have to do is wear bright clothing. The amount of cyclists I see who are dressed all in black, no wonder you're dying all the time. We can't see you. That's absolutely right. They need yeah. to wear their fluorescent uh, jackets, even if they do feel a bit silly. Yes, that's right. Well, better to be alive and silly, eh? Yeah. All right. yeah there's nothing wrong with being silly. All right. Cheers, Lou. Spitting, no spitting, No please. spitting. I've written it down. All right. Thanks okay, a lot. OK, thanks. Ta Bye. Here is, um... Oh, we've had Pamela already. You're not going quickly enough, Visa. The calls are coming in, and they're, uh, you're lagging behind. We'll wait. In fact, we'll go for a break and give you some time. That's, uh, it's the respectful thing to do. London's biggest conversation. with Clive Bull. After the news at 10. LBC 97.3. Okie dokie. OK, let's have Witchmore Hill. M oh. Marjorie. Yes. Hello, Marjorie. Hello. Um, two sides to every argument until you take one. Two sides to every argument. Until you take one. Is that a rule for modern living? Well, it's right, isn't it? Um, There's two sides to everything, and uh, uh, if you don't take the, um, if you don't take both sides, two sides to every argument until you take one, one side. And N then there's one side. Mm. Experience is a great teacher, but you get the test before you get the lessons. Right. I think these are more uh, t tenets, or not tenets exactly, but um, what, what would you call these? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had them written down years ago, and I just found them in my handbag. All oh, right. Well, you know, <laughs> now you found a use for them. <laughs> yeah. You've thrown me, Marjorie. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Right. Bye. Cheers, my dear. Uh, let's have uh, Middlesbrough. Midge. Oh, good evening. Hi, Nick. How are you going? Uh, long time no here. I know. <laughs> Haven't I been lucky? Oh. <laughs> Can I just add something to you? I've just been here making a list. Go on, then. Uh, make love, not war. Uh, make love, not war. Yeah. Yes. Um... <laughs> Is he OK? Uh, it's... Well, it sounds like you read it off the sticker of a beetle, but it fits right no, in. No, it just came to me. It's, I just put it on my radio. Yeah, I bet it did. OK, thanks a lot, mate. That's, uh, <laughs> that's excellent. Make love, not war. Groovy. Yeah, and nuclear power, no thanks. And all those other, um, hippie stickers that we used to, uh, have. Make love, not war. Have you got one for us, Visa? Um, probably. Drive, probably. Drive your car as if your newborn baby was on the bonnet. I think if everybody drove as careful as that, we wouldn't have half as many accidents. Well, that's true. Yeah. I mean, the screaming between, um, lights doesn't actually <laughs> do you any good at all, because you could make that journey I at five miles an hour and you'd still get to where you're going at the same time, right? As opposed to rushing away from one set of lights and screeching to a halt at, uh, at another. If you just proceeded in a sane manner, then you'd arrive um, feeling better. I mean, I, I came here in, uh, very slowly today and I, um, I, I arrived in uh, a, f a fine frame of mind. Whereas if I'd uh, driven hell for leather, in the same manner that I used to uh, go from Leeds to London, 
I would have been, um, well, I wouldn't have calmed down by now. I think if you drive faster, you're more likely to feel more aggressive by the time you get to your destination because you've, you know, you've just got more aggressive because you're not getting any further any quicker yeah. than if, you, if you're going slowly, you know you're going to get there slowly, so you anticipate that. And what helps with that is not listening to... Rock and roll! <laughs> listen to something like classical music or uh, a speech radio uh, does so perfectly, which um, is handy because we have a speech station. It's true, actually. When I used to drive into London all the time, I was always listening to LBC because I, it, it, it distracted right my mind and it calmed yeah. me down when I was stuck in traffic jams. Unless somebody says, uh, like me, uh, something asinine, and then you start shouting at the radio, and then uh, <laughs> the, all, the, the plan all falls apart. Any more for the final list? Um, I've got one. Heza? Stop showing off. Stop showing off. That would solve everything. Uh, that's specifically um, aimed at men, isn't it? It men is, and isn't boys. it? Yeah. yeah. How did you pick that up? Was because that we're uh, we're dopes. Mm. Any fool will know that. I'll just take these very briefly. See what they got. Hello. Hello. Make love, not this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, hello. Oh, uh, hi, Sigo. Um, yes. Yeah, I got one. Self, remember, remember yourself. But Self always be aware of yourself and where you are. Right. Um, I think I understand. From the top, free tap water on uh, the restaurant table without having to ask for it, damn it. No littering. Have a sense of humour. Motorbikes should stick to their own side of the road. Be truthful. Do as you would be done by. Be charitable. Keep promises. Be nice. Respect others. No dogs. Shut up. No spitting. Cyclists must be bright and right. Make love, not war. Drive slower and stop showing off. And our favourite, of course. Hey, Clive. Be polite. 